The D20 Syndicate presents The Lineage of Moonreach. Welcome back to the D20 Syndicate Podcast. Hey. Uh, <laughs> really, guys, that's... that's <laughs> You guys are wonderful. It's hey. early. <laughs> it ain't that early. It's almost <laughs> lunch. We had a long drive, okay? All right. Yes. Fine, fine. Let me let me inject a little bit more emphasis into this. Welcome back to the D20 Syndicate Podcast. Wow. <laughs> That's what I like to hear. <laughs> a, a weekly Dungeons & Dragons podcast. I am your host and DM, Seth. And around the table, we have our players. I'm Tomas, and I play Arlie. Hmm? <laughs> He's a Lightfoot Halfling Ranger. He's a distant cousin of Pinwin, who you are probably familiar with. I mean, maybe. <laughs> this is going to be their first episode they listen to. So, <laughs> <laughs> If you want to know who Pinwin is, check out our... Watch the fucking show. <laughs> or listen to it, whatever. Don't, watch it with your watch ears. because it it's just audio. <laughs> You can watch it on YouTube. It's just a flat Unmoving image. Oh, image. Right. Consume it. Like you'll, yes. you'll, you'll in whatever form on. that manifests in. All right. Go ahead. I'm Lindsay, and I play Olanana, Ola for short, and she is a furball druid. Cool. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I can't do my thing. What? And I'm Michaela. Oh, <laughs> yeah, she's on last. That's okay. <laughs> I hope so. It's okay, guys. Well. <laughs> I'm Michaela, and I'm playing Fletch Bangarang, a gnome rogue. I'm Elijah, and I'm playing Owatu, a lizard folk cleric. I'm Stephanie, and I'm playing Flemeth, a human druid. And I'm Scott, and I will be playing Silger, a half orc fighter. That's right, guys. We have some temporary players. We are here at Gen Con in Indianapolis, and we've got two of the members of the Shocking Gasp podcast. We have Scott and Woo! Stephanie. Welcome. Welcome. So we're going to do a one shot today as a kind of a special treat to you listeners, and uh, I hope that this uh, makes you guys very happy, and I hope that you all still love us, even though we're changing <laughs> it up and, you know, uh, patterns are important, but... Also, make sure you guys check out the Shocking Gasp podcast. Why don't you go ahead and plug your uh, website and your stuff there, sure, Scott? Sure, sure. Shocking Gasp is another 5th edition D&D actual play podcast. Uh, I would say our shtick is terrible, terrible accents and a lot of refried <laughs> jokes. <laughs> we kind of <laughs> turn the same ones over and over. We release every other week on Tuesdays, and you can find us on our website, shockinggasp.com, or on Twitter, at shockinggaspdnd. Perfect. Well, thanks for joining us today, guys. Uh, this should be fun, hopefully. Yeah. Hopefully it's not miserable. If it is, I mean, we're just going to throw the whole thing in the trash. So. <laughs> Blame I shock and gasp. Because <laughs> <laughs> normally this is perfect. <laughs> <Just kidding. laughs> well oiled machine. Yeah, so make sure you guys, uh, uh, after, after you listen to all of this episode, please go over and download all of their entire collection and worship them and oh, yeah. you know interact like with them on like twitter i like everything you're saying right yeah. now yeah. <laughs> I, I figured you would buddy i figured you would <laughs> um so yeah we are uh gonna do things a little bit differently today uh as i as i mentioned it is a one shot so we will uh hopefully wrap this up in uh, one go you know shoot our shot our one shot so <laughs> sorry if i think of a pun i'm just gonna use it and you guys just have to deal with it <laughs> All right, so <laughs> so let's set the stage here a little bit. <clears throat> this uh, this one shot will take place in the city of Three Bridges. Now, Th- Three Bridges is the largest city in the Veldolin Swamplands. It sits on the confluence of the Manticore River and the Lion River. Originally just a passage for travelers, the Three Bridges were constructed as a way for farmers living in the nearby Blinking Hills to safely cross the conflux. The streets of three bridges are set high up, many more than 40 feet above the water. Boats are essential for navigating the canals and other waterways for a large portion of the population as they dwell below the main roads. The architecture of the city itself is beautiful. The buildings hewn from Dovian limestone, which is known for its russet and sienna hues. The land surrounding the city alternates between hilly and swampy fens. Because of this, 
The major crops grown in this section of Veldlin are cranberries and cattails, a delicacy among the peoples. You are all adventurers, and you've all been traveling together for roughly a week's time. You're familiar with each other. You've been getting some pretty decent coin to uh, contribute to uh, a, an organization's uh, mission. And they seem to be very interested in collecting rare artifacts. Now, you only know the handler that you've interacted with who refers to himself as the master. And he's tall, but you're not sure what, uh, what race he is or anything much about him as he wears a wooden mask obscuring his facial features, soft linen gloves that cover his hands, and a long crimson-colored robe anytime he emerges from the back room of the Wheat Rock Inn. Wheat Rock Inn is down in one of the lower levels of the uh, city, accessible only by uh, a boat, um, and then there's a little rocky pathway uh, going basically resembling some really narrow alleys. And uh, it's a kind of a shabbily built, constructed uh, building that uh, kind of makes you think that some kind of nefarious things have happened in the past here. And you, most of you would have noticed that there's a sense of just kind of foreboding whenever you enter. There's something not quite right about this inn. And there's a level of grime kind of covering every inch of the place. There's blood stains. There's chip marks taken out of the walls and the floor. It's a, it's a kind of a gross environment. But some of you guys are experts at dealing with the gross and the nefarious. You're all sitting in the tavern hall, completely empty other than you in the group, waiting as you've been summoned here to uh, speak with the master in regards to your next mission. So all of you are, uh, yeah, kind of hanging out here just waiting for this guy to show up. So if you would like to chat a little bit. (laughs) No. (laughs) (laughs) Uh, I'm going to be standing off to the side Okay, Arlie is standing off to the side Looking at attention Okay, what's everybody else doing? Silgar will probably have, uh, you know, a big mug of ale in front of him And he's looking around the room And I don't know why the master always makes us wait so long He invited us here, we're here on time Why can't he be on time? So Silger, he's a he's a very tall, very tall half orc, maybe a six five, six six, and he's got big, huge muscles that he likes to show off. He only wears like a leather vest, you know, so suns out, guns out all the time. <laughs> um, and then uh, he's he's got scars everywhere, so you can tell he's been roughed up a little bit. And then his two tusks coming out of his bottom jaw are uh, are golden. They're like gold-plated tusks. Mm. Oh, nice. Yeah. And uh, just as a as a, some background, guys, you you guys, last mission, you've been hanging out here in Three Bridges, but your last mission was, uh, you were, you were tra- you've been traveling with different companions. You're the core group, but they obviously they've been hiring some other people, this organization that keeps its name kind of secretive as well. Uh, you have been traveling with different people. Um, the last mission you were on actually took place here in the city of Three Bridges, and all you were required to do was to help uh, kind of lead someone somewhere. It was, a, it was a very interesting and suspicious mission, but you had to lead this little old lady to a house on the other side of the city and stop her from being attacked. And during all this, you guys had started to kind of grow fond of this kind of boisterous dwarf. Um, his name was uh, Torelgular Oakentank, and you guys all called him fondly Tori. He was kind of he was kind of the, the the life of the party, but he was killed. So um, mm. he is you know you've lost this companion, and it was kind of a kind of kind of brought your group slightly closer together because even even those of you who don't particularly enjoy interacting with people. Um, he had a he had a way about him. There's something just very charismatic about him, and so there's a there's definitely a little bit of a, kind of a cloud over this group at the moment. Um, but it's been a few days, and you've you've had time to grieve a little bit. So um, it's a it's a, it's a loss, but uh, you guys have a job to do. So just uh, just thought you might want to know that. <laughs> um, Awatu, what are you doing? 
probably just sitting off to the side, uh, watching the group. Okay. I'm still trying to learn their ways um, in society. So I'm kind of studying uh, Silger as he drinks his booze and trying to study his, his facial expressions, um, <laughs> mannerisms. Are you really paying attention to Silger? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's the guns. <laughs> yeah. The captivating. Huh. Yep. Uh, Just trying to learn a little bit. And, and what do you look like? Um, so I am a massive lizard folk. Um, my scales look very dull and kind of cracked. Um, I look very dry. And uh, you need to moisturize, yeah, buddy. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And uh, my my they're they're kind of like grayish colored, um, very muscular. I don't I don't really wear <clears throat> armor. There's um, lots of bones that I have draped around me, and I carry a bone hammer um, and a shield that's made of. Is there like a <laughs> Bone that I could have found that's like the size of a shield. Like um, a yeah, shell. shell, dragon ass bone. Did you guys say that at the same time? Yes. Yes. <laughs> yes. It's a that's turtle why shell. We got married. Turtle <laughs> shell. Awesome. Okay. Yeah, I have a turtle shell shield, and uh, painted on the front of it is a. It it looks to be a skeletal hand uh, with claws, and the the claw on the pointer finger is missing. It's um. It looks like it's painted in like mud, or it's very roughly done. Possibly blood. Okay. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Gotcha. Um, Arlie, you described what you were doing. Uh, why don't you tell us what you look like? Um, he's a stout little guy. Uh, he wears just simple, well-worn leather armor. Um, he's got uh blonde hair, and it's tied back in a knot, and the sides are kind of short. And he has two crossbows on his hips, like two small crossbows. Nice. Uh, Flem, what is yeah. what are you doing and how do you look? Um, Flem's probably pacing. She's super excited. She's getting a new mission. Um, she's probably got like her hands clasped to her chest and she's like, oh, I'm so excited. I wonder what this next mission's going to be. <laughs> um, but the way she looks, she's kind of, she lives in the woods. She doesn't ascribe to current fashions. Her hair is kind of wild and crazy. It's probably never, ever seen a brush. Um, And it's a bit frizzy, but it's adorned with wildflowers and bits of sumac leaves. And she's probably got a good dusting of dirt on her as well. (laughs) All right. And uh, how about you, Ola? How do you look? And what are you doing? Um, Ola is this big fur bulg, and she has blue skin. And then she has, despite like that big kind of maybe at first intimidating looking appearance as you get closer, you'd see she has braided pigtails and has a little daisy tucked behind her ear. (laughs) (laughs) All right. And what's she what's she up to? Um, She'd probably be just kind of sitting and waiting, maybe talking to Silger or whoever's not scared of human people. (laughs) (laughs) Um, Fletch, what are you doing? How do you look? Fletch is sitting at the table with Silger, and he is drinking an ale and kind of taking everybody in. So Fletch has kind of dirty blonde hair. His skin is kind of like the color of a bruised peach. Um, Mm. He has some bruises. He gets into little scuffs here and there. Uh, Hazel eyes, about 3'11", almost four foot. He tells people he's four foot tall. (laughs) (laughs) Yeah. It's a pretty tall gnome. Yeah. (laughs) He knows. (laughs) And he's slightly taller than you might think. Deal with it. (laughs) Ladies, get yourself a man that's at least four feet. (laughs) Um, So, yeah, as you guys are kind of, yeah, just hanging out and waiting, um, you're, uh, you know, it, it almost takes too long as it as it feels like the this uh the master whenever he emerges it always seems like he's got a flair for the dramatic and sure enough after what feels to be an extended long time um 
A back panel in the wall slides open. He always emerges from a different location, some other different... (laughs) <laughs> different hidden location. <laughs> Repelling from the same. <laughs> he, this time, though, yeah, he's, the panel pops in the wall out pops cake. out. Pops out of the cake. <laughs> ah, master. <laughs> I'm so glad I didn't eat that cake. Um, but yeah, he, he sh- kind of strides into the room. As I mentioned, he's very tall, kind of a languid like movements. He has a long crimson colored robe, a wooden mahogany colored mask with two eye holes carved in them with burn marks around it as if he like curved it and then or carved it and then burned it a little bit to kind of widen it. And you can see that he's very piercing, like light blue eyes behind um, behind the mask. Um, And as he strides in, he very dramatically sits down at the uh, same table that Silger and uh, and Fletch are at and kind of throws his hand in the air and well 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 thank you so much for showing up finally i was i was i was busy but uh, as you know the, how it is here at the uh, in, in in three bridges it's it's you know it's a mile a minute every everything's just so chaotic i i, I almost forgot about this so um uh, what can i help you all with you summoned us here you called yeah. us here yeah. oh um well Ah, yes, yes. And he stands up and he kind of adjusts his, his cloak. I've got a, uh, a very uh, unique mission that I would like to send you all on, if you are so inclined. Uh, it is, uh, it'll, it'll net you a bit of coin. It'll net you, uh, how, uh, what's to say, uh, what was the last one? How much did I pay you? A hundred gold. I don't believe that's <laughs> correct. That's what you said. Uh, does, is that, is that, my memory is foggy. Um, a promise is a promise. Um, Sounds go, about right to me. Everybody roll deception. <laughs> that that contributed to that, oh. I'm that lie. I'm not trying to deceive anyone. <laughs> Flemeth would do it for free. <laughs> <laughs> Sogo got a 15. Okay. Mm, that's not going to be good. <laughs> Six. 18. 18. He's not buying it from the Furbolg, but he... Uh, the Furbolg is just kind of a weird sword anyway. But, uh, I'm just saying it because I want friendship, and it feels forced. <laughs> <laughs> Silger and uh, Fletch, you're very convincing. Well, all right. Uh, it will do a, we'll do a we'll do hundred gold then, if, if, that is, if that's what I said. I, I swear I would have said much smaller, but <laughs> perhaps I was deep in my cups. Um, so what, what we'll be doing here is I, uh, there's a particularly... Um, important item I would like you all to acquire for me. And uh, it is deep within the recesses of the Broken Oath Guildhall. Um, You may have heard of it, perhaps you haven't. And those of you who are familiar with um, Three Bridges would know that the Broken Oath Guildhall was, the the guild was a very prominent guild that specialized in um, like dark magic there was a lot of there was a, a lot of rumors they were doing some pretty mm, not kosher shit and they uh, but they 10 years ago everyone in that guild completely disappeared and nobody knows why or what happened and uh, it's kind of like oh you know oh don't end up like the, oh, the broken oath like yeah you don't want to you don't want to uh, end up like they did be careful kind of like a boogeyman scenario because it was very much uh for a while, one of the biggest things that happened in the town. That was a decade ago. And so he, you know, he dramatically sits back down, rests a hand. Is that in town or is it outside of town? Um, or, uh, you would know that it's not inside the confines of the town. It's just outside in the swamps. It's kind of dangerous out there. Well, it, it is a bit dangerous, but that's why I have brought you here. You're all the best at what you do. Is that not correct? That's yeah. entirely accurate. We're very good. We're pretty very good, good at what we do. Wonderful, wonderful. So it shouldn't be a problem at all, especially for the large amount of coin you've decided that I owe you. But that's neither here nor there. A good job is worth good coin. So why don't we, uh, why don't we get down to brass tacks here? I need you to go to this guild hall. Now you are only allowed to have six people inside. There is a magical gate, a runic spell that keeps any more than six from entering. 
you can have as few as you want. If a couple of you guys stumble off into the swamp, that is perfectly okay, and, you know, that's par for the course. However, only six of you are allowed inside. As you know, there are others who are working and are chomping at the bit to make such good coin. So I will also give you a summoning stone. If you would like more to uh, help you on your journey, say you lose someone, say someone dies, you can summon one of the other helpers, and they will be right there. And he's going to hand it to Fletch. No, I'll take that. Is there, are there any questions you would like? The item is a gem. We are not sure what it looks like or what it is affixed to, but it is somewhere inside the guild hall, and uh, the rumor is that you'll know it when you see it. How do you know it's there? Oh, I've got, I've got good sources. That's neither here nor there, though. Are there any more questions? Wonderful! And he stands up <laughs> and he crosses the room. Now, please be assured, if you have not acquired this gem by the 12th bell tonight, I will have to send someone out and you will be completely void of any payment. So, make sure that you do this and do this well and uh, maybe there'll be a bit of extra coin in it for you. And with that, he pops a spot on the wall. It's... <laughs> slides back open, and he disappears into the darkness, and it closes behind him. That's so cool when he does that. <laughs> <laughs> Gives me the willies. <laughs> I think we could have asked for more. I don't know how money works. Huh? I live in the woods. So. I'm pretty excited to have some money. I haven't had a whole lot. Nobody else is nervous? He's just casually willing to give that much money for this trip? I mean, we're all pretty capable and pretty strong, and I don't know. Don't you think we're ready? Yeah. I've never been scared of anything. It shouldn't be that hard. I'm the greatest thief in all the world. <laughs> I've well. never seen you steal anything. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. That's why I'm the greatest. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe Oatu might need to lead because he came right out of the swamp that one day. Speaking Weirded of him, everyone should out. we, like, mist him or something? Looks a little dry. He looks a little does, crackly. He does look like well, he's he not needs in his a little natural bit habitat of anymore. TLC. Well, I've oh, been what's out. Your, what's your natural <laughs> habitat? I've been out of the swamps for weeks now. I'm going to whisper to Fletch. Pretty sure I saw him eating flesh. <laughs> well, like actual flesh. Well, I do gain <laughs> power. From eating flesh. Oh my. Oh, I didn't, oh, I didn't know oh, you heard me just now. You, you, you said flesh. Flesh. Not, Not flesh. Flesh. <laughs> flesh. Like cow flesh. It's, no. Pig flesh? Chicken flesh? It was like, it was like oh, that's, a bit of an arm. That's gross. <laughs> bit of an arm. Should we just ask him? What's so gross about it? Oh, so you actually were eating an arm. Yes. <laughs> oh. Did you cook it? No. Uh, where, no, that's uh, gross. Where'd you, where'd you get it from? <laughs> from our last Just mission. Found it. Mm. <laughs> Tori? You ate Tori's arm? Oh, you... Oh, that's <laughs> you did. That's Is, crossing a line. Would that be... bad? No. Uh, Is that something no. you don't do? It wouldn't do? be good. No. no. Generally, no. you don't eat people. No. Even I know that. Frowned Your upon. friends. Yeah. Frowned upon. He, he was our Pretty friend. sure dwarves like... Then it wasn't him. Oh, good. <laughs> <laughs> Fair enough. Problem right. solving. Um, We're on a time crunch, so we should probably yeah. get, get going. Uh, deception? <laughs> <laughs> they got clocks in the, in the woods then? Uh, no, I can see the, the sun, what time it is. So. We're in the basement. It, it's, uh, a, it's a I dream. I can day. feel the sun. Ten for deception. So... Even though he said that, it's pretty clear that he's not even sure if he ate him or not. <laughs> uh, it may have been your friend, Tori, but it may not have. <laughs> but I don't know. All right. He's Maybe. definitely not confident that it wasn't. So. <laughs> Maybe he just needs a little bit of redirection. Have you ever had pie? <laughs> what is pie? Oh, he, he just needs some pie. Oh, pie. And then he'll stop eating people. <laughs> <laughs> well, if we do, you bump, have 
pie for me to sample. <laughs> I wish I was a pie maker, but I'm not. So, but I think we'll come across a pie. Perhaps they make pie here. Do they have pie here? He left. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> yeah, uh, Ola looks up to where um, the master left just a few moments ago and sees that he's <laughs> he's suddenly gone. <laughs> he's like midway gone. He's like in the process of Irish goodbye. <laughs> like, oh. But yes, I can lead you through the swamps. Mm, excellent. All right. Well, no time better than the present. All right, let's go. So, it's this way. <laughs> <laughs> and he points at the door. <laughs> um, you guys exit the uh, the tavern, and uh, you're in that narrow road. You can see that there are some, like, it's it's early morning, and uh, there's not a f- many people out there, but the people that are, they don't look like the uh, most savory of sort. Um, you can see a drunk uh, half-orc kind of stumbling uh, along the the pathway, as he does, he kind of looks over at you, Silger, and gives you like an appreciative up and down, like, "Hey, bloke, you look strong." And then he just kind of wanders off. Oh yeah, <laughs> <laughs> and he just yeah wanders off down the path. Um, you guys did arrive here by two rowboats, and so you guys clamber on in and uh, head down one of the watery brackish canals that kind of. Uh, permeate this level of three bridges. Um, I will ask, does anybody want to do anything in the town before you leave? Buy a pie. Buy a pie? <laughs> <laughs> do you guys want to spend some time buying pie? Because I'll let you buy some pie. It's fine. <laughs> <laughs> what time is it right now? Morning. Early morning. Early morning. Okay. So we have we have a little time. To go pie shop. Yeah. <laughs> This is, uh, this is what the one shot is. When life gives you lemons, you eat pie. Huh? When life gives you lemons, you eat pie. So let's let's go get some pie. Okay. Get you okay. off the, we'll go the buy people. A pie okay, give me Don't an investigation check. Uh, you two. <laughs> not good. Not Ten. Good. Okay. Are either of you from... You know, you're not from this town. Are you from this Ooh. town? Ola? I could scrounge up some no. pie. Okay. You guys, are, you guys spend a little bit of time, like too long a time, trying to find pie before <laughs> Arlie is like, I know where to get pie. <laughs> and Arlie leads you to a bakery, and uh, the man inside, he's covered in like flour and... <laughs> You're right. Uh, he's covered in flour. Um, he's just a human, kind of a heavy set human. Um, and he greets you, Arlie. Uh, he- hello, Arlie. How are you today? Uh, I'm good. Uh, I don't remember your name. Oh, my name is Limick. 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 Sorry. It's all right. Nobody remembers it. Just been in here the one time. Uh, they were looking for I a remember your name, but my name what? Well, I'm a, t- a town guy. I knew. Man, all over the place. Do you have a special kind of pie that'll make people stop eating people? Um, no. Um, <laughs> <laughs> that seems uh, a bit specific, but... I do have this delicious, and he picks up this giant like pie and sets it right in front of you with a big <laughs> meat pie. All right, how's that look? It's got gator in it. Pretty good, right? It's got some birds. There's a bunch of different shit in there. Arms. Yeah, there's a couple of arms probably. <laughs> Wings, feet, a I, bit of beak. I do like gator and birds. I will try it. Mm-hmm. Oh, 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 oh. You got a pie before you try, my friend. What is the price? For something like this? Um, well... And he looks like he's just trying to figure something out. Um, th- f- five gold. I will buy the pie. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so you pull five gold out of your pouch and you... And then he... Hand you this heavy, heavy pie. Sweet. It's, it's roughly a foot in diameter. Um, and it weighs probably five pounds. Donkin pie. <laughs> that yeah. is a donkin pie. <laughs> that was a good chunk of my gold. <laughs> <laughs> you have an extra twenty. Worth it, Keep yeah. that in mind. Worth its weight. I in will pie. scarf down the pie. <laughs> okay. <laughs> is All right. it good? Everybody. You guys watch as he. <laughs> yeah, I imagine it's entirely disgusting. <laughs> <laughs> is it disgusting? It's good. 
<laughs> okay, gotcha. I will return here <laughs> when I need more sustenance. All right, okay. All We're right. making steps. <laughs> all right, so after your uh, uh, little detour, um, you all hop back in your rowboats and head out through the Port Cullis Gate um, and uh, make your way into the swamps with, uh, with Owatu kind of leading you. You spend about an hour navigating before you come to a kind of a dry spot in the, uh, the otherwise super swampy um, swamps. And, <laughs> um, super swampy swamps. And it's a, it's a dry spot that looks as though um, many boats have docked here in the past. Um, some of the some of the grass that does that is on this little spot is uh, worn away, muddy, and uh, so it's not that dry, I guess. <laughs> and uh, off in the distance, there are uh, thick uh, trees. It's it's a little bit of a swampy forest, and you can hear some the the kind of the boggy chirping of crickets, and you can hear the bullfrogs, and. Uh, it seems, though, that as you get closer to the woods, the, uh, the sounds sort of die away, and an ominous sort of feeling creeps into you guys' bones. You're, uh, this is a, it's, a, it's a little unsettling. You feel as though you're trespassing on maybe sacred or hollowed ground, but uh, you've got a mission to do, so you guys continue on down a small path and uh, move through the, the woods a bit, and finally... After another 20, 30 minutes, you come to a clearing, and on a small hill in the middle of this forest is a large manor, dilapidated, lost to time a bit. Dilapidated, you idiot. <laughs> <laughs> I said that for you. <laughs> um, and, uh, yeah, it it's, seems to climb clear up above the treetops, and it's got four large parapets uh, on the corners kind of as anchors. The door itself is about 10 feet tall, looks to be made of wood. There are windows, but any that had glass at one point definitely do, it's been broken or they don't have it anymore. This The entire building is being crawled over by vines and couscous and just all manner of couscous. Sorry, not couscous. <laughs> um, what <laughs> and uh, you can see that there are beetles and bugs kind of crawling all over this place it's been it's been a while since anyone's approached and the closer you get to it the more strong this unsettling feeling gets now living in these swamps uh, are there any tales about this place do I know anything about it you would know that even your kind still were they steered clear of this area it was there were there were bad things going on here sometimes people reported that you'd hear screams at night uh people crying out you, there were flashes of magical light and energy at, at certain points it's uh it's a bad place got a lot of bad juju here so hmm. you, you you especially will feel kind of unsettling because it's very unnatural these are your swamps they had it for a long time and this place is still considered uh, kind of something nobody wants to trespass on. I will not share that with the group. <laughs> okay. <laughs> so, who put a house right there? That seems weird. Yeah, this is a uh, this is pretty. The broken creepy. oath. Creepy. This is this is a broken oath. Oh, are you still not scared? No. <laughs> All right. Uh, maybe a little scared of that structural soundness. Foundation looks a little iffy. Maybe that's I kick the foundation. <laughs> <laughs> uh, give me a strength check. <laughs> it shatters. <laughs> and we find the gem very easily. <laughs> <laughs> the whole thing explodes. This is how our group wipes. <laughs> oh, you got backups. <laughs> Well, it was an 11, so don't worry. <laughs> okay. So, yeah, it's it's actually more sound than you thought. When you kick it, it's just like, oh, this is sturdy. But perhaps this building is being held up by a magical means. Oh. What would you guys like to do? 
Uh, Silgar will walk up to the front door and open it, Cohen. All right. Um, so you just grab on and pull her open? Yeah. Okay. Give me a deck save. <laughs> I knew there was a trick question. <laughs> <laughs> Anytime the DM like questions it's your like, action. like, are you sure? I was like, you how hard do, do I want to metagame this? <laughs> uh, is that a 20? Save, save. Is that 13? No. Where are the saves on this thing? Paper loses again. <laughs> okay. Uh, 16. 16. Okay, so it you you hear a th- 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 as you open the door, and you, you are able to step to the side as a dart comes flying out of the door. It just whistles past you. Shoo, the rest of you guys, give me a deck save. I don't want to die this fast. Twelve. Um, Twenty. Oh, wait. No. Fifteen. Ten. Fifteen. Nineteen. Luckily, all of you, but Ola just Aww. barely, <laughs> oh, no. are able to move out of the way as this dart hits the ground next to you and... This purple mist trails off of it, almost like a smoke bomb, kind of filling the area, and you guys step back. But you were the closest, Ola, but still just barely you were able to avoid being hit by this. And you guys kind of give it a wide berth, and after a moment, almost just extremely strangely, the mist itself moves off down the path you guys just came from, all in one cohesive unit, and then disappears. Don't Gonna worry, have to guys. be a little faster. <laughs> I disarmed a trap on the front door. It's safe now. <laughs> that was a bit weird. I can um, pull out my crossbows now. Be okay. more on edge. You guys see Arlie pull out his crossbows. We will have to tread carefully here. <laughs> Going forward. I think we got that from the mist. Right. <laughs> Is there okay. like a <laughs> okay? Is there like a pressure plate, or do we just go right in the front door? I can, uh, I well, can find traps. I can cast a spell and try to find some traps. Can't tell you where okay. they are, but I can tell you if they're there. Yeah. <laughs> that sounds really good. It could be don't useful. You think? Yeah. You yeah. guys don't like my disarming abilities. Yeah, you disarmed it. <laughs> <laughs> I'm nearly hit by that. I mean, it still went off. <laughs> it almost hit all of us. That's just a matter of perspective and definition. <laughs> I mean, we're all we're all right now. Yeah, it's not going off again. <laughs> and then he walks in and it shoots again. <laughs> so I disarmed it. Technically correct. <laughs> all right, lead the way. How do Righto. I do? How do I do this? <laughs> you cast in. Fine mm-hmm. traps. Okay. The second level spell. I just yeah. tell you. I don't have yep. to roll anything. No. So you, yeah, just make sure you mark your spell slot. And um, so, yeah, you detect. Uh, will you read that real quick just yeah. so I can see exactly what happened? So you sense the presence of any trap within range, which is 120 feet. That's within line of sight. A trap for the purpose of this spell includes anything that would inflict a sudden or unexpected effect you consider harmful or undesirable which was specifically intended for, as such by its creator. Thus, the spell would sense an area affecting affected by the alarm spell, a glyph of warding, or a mechanical pit trap, but it would not reveal any natural weakness in the floor, an unstable ceiling, or a hidden sinkhole. The spell reveals that a trap is present. I don't learn the location of each trap, but I do learn the general nature of the danger posed by the trap I sense. Okay, so, and it's 120 feet in a straight yes. line, basically? Yes. Okay, you actually sense two traps within 120 feet in a straight line, both harmful, uh, <laughs> both, and you said it doesn't tell you the nature of the trap? It, it does tell me the nature of the trap. It doesn't tell me where the trap is. Okay, gotcha. Yes, there is a pressure plate uh, that you can, it says you, you don't know where, but within that range, there is a pressure plate, and you can tell that it's big, and there's also a trip wire that is uh, posed to uh, activate a magical effect okay. of <clears throat> damage. <laughs> All right. There, you guys got to watch your step in here because this thing is booby tracked to heck. There's a pressure plate somewhere. There's trip wire somewhere. So just be careful where you step. Tread lightly. I know. 
<laughs> Good. I'm, I'm glad. You know. That's right. I knew. I knew already. You I'm did. the greatest thief. I already knew it. <laughs> <laughs> All right, then you go on ahead and yeah. disarm him. Yeah. Well, you you didn't like the way I did it last time, so as long what as what do I know? I'm just a guard. All right. <laughs> Sogar will boldly walk in. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So it's not too proud. Surrounded by traps. Yeah, you're back up here, pal. Right, too bad idea. I'm just too proud. Of is, going in. is he going to be like looking at all, or is he just marching in? Uh, no, I'll look. Okay. I'll try not to let them know that I'm looking. Okay. Give me. Make it seem natural. Give me a sleight of hand check, or uh, give me a deception check, and then a perception check. Deception. Whoops. Oops. Perception. Mm-hmm. So they know I'm looking. <laughs> <laughs> they know. I got a seven on that. But my perception, I have a 17. Okay. So you guys walk, watch him walk in immediately, start w- looking around all crazy, trying to like make sure he's not stepping into something. Um, but you do see about 20 feet ahead of you um, in this. Well, I should describe the room for you. Sorry. You guys are in a massive foyer. And it is completely torn like there's there are like velvet curtains that are hanging down and they've been ripped to shreds there's dust and mud and dirt all over the floor there's broken pieces of rock um you can see that at one time along this wall there were there there's a shelf where there were probably statues uh kind of indicating something they're large statues but they've been destroyed like one is partially there you can see like the feet and the middle of the torso of a statue you can't tell what any of them depicted because they look like they've just been like hit with a hammer repeatedly and uh yeah this whole place is just a complete and total mess and 20 feet ahead of you you see that what might have uh slipped by the perception of someone else you just just were able to see under this kind of askew carpet a little line in the floor indicating where a pressure plate is. I will point that one out. All right, so... I found a pressure plate. So you guys are now all stepping inside and you see the exact same thing he did. You can see that there is a pressure plate on the floor underneath a uh, a uh, carpet. What happens if we step on it? Mm, we probably die. Don't do that. I can find out if you want. Nah, let's oh, let's just go feelings. ahead and walk over it. <laughs> that might be useful. <laughs> what might be useful? If he steps on it. Are you looking for something to eat? <laughs> no, I, I had my meat pie. <laughs> yeah, he's on a pie diet now. <laughs> he's making his way to the good side. Can anyone just <laughs> dump something on the pressure plate from a safe distance? It does take up a good portion of the room and it would be difficult to pass. It does. It is about a 15 foot oh. um, mm-hmm. well, section. Anybody have a 10 foot pole? I'll try to throw my dagger at it as hard as I can. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Give me a, <laughs> give me from a, a strength distance. attack. Mm-hmm. 23 to, to hit. Okay. So, yeah, you you guys watch as the lizard folk gentleman kind of throws his dagger and it thunk, sticks right into the floor, the wooden floor, and then and you guys watch as the two walls on either side slam down very quickly and come back up. And for uh, everyone give me perception. 16. 19. Nine. Thirteen. Six. Okay, Seven. so everybody but Arlie and uh, Fletch, you guys can see as the walls went down, you could see that there were more statues behind the walls, and these ones did not look destroyed. And in fact, all of their heads looked as though they were facing. That they had been carved to face you, mm-hmm. and you just saw a brief glimpse of that, and then they, the walls came back up. Oh, how did that happen? <laughs> how did the walls do that? Did you see people back there? What? You, you two didn't people. see. You two did not see. We it. didn't see. It. I saw nothing. <laughs> <laughs> I just saw the walls move. I so, saw some statues back behind them. Yeah, that like was those pretty, ones. That was pretty messed yeah, but, up. But better. Who keeps statues in a wall? (laughs) (laughs) 
freaks. <laughs> who builds a wall around statues. I mean, it's really a who came first, the chicken or the egg. Maybe they're ashamed Ooh, of the statues. statues. <laughs> it's a philosophical discussion some people have. See, <laughs> chickens come from eggs, but did the first chicken appear and lay an egg, or did the first egg appear and hatch a chicken? Well, I, I, I could talk to wow. the chicken if you wanted and find out. <laughs> I, no. You know a chicken? <laughs> I know a chicken. Guys, I'm I mean, kind of freaking out in here. <laughs> <laughs> this place oh. is weird. There, there is a door on the other side in a little recessed area. As it, you can imagine that that's the next section to get to. There's no so it looks like that's the way we have to go. We can't go around it? As far as you can tell, yes. I asked if anybody had a 10-foot pole, and then I realized I have a pike. Oh, okay, nice. Oh, yeah. Mm. yeah. I don't know where I'm storing it, but I produce a pike. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Take this big ass pike off your yeah. out of zero Somewhere. space. <laughs> uh, and I wanna I wanna prod at the pressure plates again and see if the trap reactivates. Now every time you hit the plate and draw back, the trap does activate again. Do so we, we have a thwomp situation. Now? What's that? Do we also so do we all see the statues? Yes. At that point, you guys would see it enough that you can all see the statues, and they're all... St- the weird thing is, is those of you who saw it before, the statues were looking where you were. They're still looking where you are, even though you're closer to the trap. Mm-hmm. Well, that's unsettling. I sort of want to break this trap and get near them statues. How do I don't, we break I don't it? want to go near that. I don't know. Do you have any... Could be... Could we lasso them up? Tie them up? The walls? I mean, the statues, in case those things are going to move or something. <laughs> Dogs going to hold. Could you hit the pressure plate again? Sure. He hits it again. I'm going to try to cast Chill Touch on one of the statues. Okay. You have to time this well. Um, so you kind of... You get ready, and you... Stab the the pressure plate again. Wall comes down. Pff, you cast it, and you cast it on one of the statues. Mm-hmm. Immediately, the statue's head snaps up, <laughs> and it crumbles. Oh, God, <laughs> <laughs> that's cool though. <laughs> it screamed up at the sky for a moment, almost <sighs> just a, a quick <laughs> yelp. But terrifying that. And then it crumbled. <laughs> it crumbled into just like ash on the ground. How many oh. more statues are there? There are four on each side. Well, now there's three on one side and four on the other. Well, I don't like that. I'll try to thorn whip one of them. Okay. Just so you know, Awatu wasn't scared. <laughs> I was way scared. <laughs> <laughs> I love doing those quick movements because I know Elijah's always going to be like, <laughs> <laughs> You're going to try to thorn whip? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, Nine. Nine. So you miss <laughs> as the trap goes down. Your can I try and shoot one when it's open? Yeah, go ahead and give me an attack roll. Uh, twenty, twenty. Shit, twenty-four. Okay, so as the trap goes down, you miss with your thorn whip, and we'll say you were shooting at the same one, Arlie, and you fire this arrow, and it hits, and just as the wall comes back up, you see the eyes of the of the statue. <laughs> lower and <laughs> glare at you oh. <laughs> as the wall comes back up. I'm starting to think those aren't statues. Yeah, I, I've never mm. seen statues like this. This is weird. There's a, sorry. <laughs> oh, <go ahead. laughs> there's a bookshelf in here? Uh, no, there was just a regular shelf where statues were. Kind of like a recessed space. Anything that would have been in here is, has been completely destroyed. There is, there's rock and there are chips of wood and like pieces of wood. If we hold down the plate, do the walls just stay down and we could climb over them? Hmm. There's a thought. I pick up a rock. Okay. And I roll it onto the pressure plate. Is okay. there a rock in there? Yeah, there's some rocks. rocks. Yep. So you roll it onto the pressure plate. The walls go down and smash the rock. Great. And it comes back up. Hmm. Nope. I want to wedge something behind the walls when they come down. Yeah. Okay. Like, how fast do they spring back up? Very very quickly. Less than a second. Uh, yeah, I want to see if I can wedge something back there. What are you going to try to wedge back there? My arm. <laughs> <laughs> I've got it. <laughs> Tori's arm. I'm quite strong. <laughs> oh, good. I'm quite strong. I could probably just hold it. 
No, I'm going to get it. Oh, I was gonna, it's, I, I'll let you attempt anything. No, 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 I'm not going to try that. Uh, maybe another rock or something. Another rock. Okay. Um, so we'll do... Uh, what would that be? Let's do... Um, we'll just make it a general dex thing to see if you can do it quickly enough to get it in the right spot. So give me a, yeah, a dex. Whoa. Ooh, natural 20. Critical. All right. So you guys activate the pressure plate again. And are you going left or right? Right is where the ones on your right are the ones that where they've already been handling these statues. Or are you going to do it on the other side? I'm going to go on the side where we've already destroyed one. Gotcha. Um, and so the walls come down and you've easily, you're just like, <laughs> and you just <laughs> set it in the exact perfect position. And <laughs> you can see that the, the stone is struggling under the weight as if this might not last super long. Mm-hmm. But you have made a narrow sliver in the uh, kind of the opening and as you look in you can see that the statues are kind of moving oddly as if almost as if they're floating and they're uh, the three remaining ones are staring at you one looks really angry with an arrow poking out of its stone flesh the other two are just kind of watching but they all look like they their feet are not touching the ground anymore they are they do look as though they are floating or underwater even can we all see them? Or yeah, if you were to all kind of approach, you would see this as well. Can I attack? I'm going to chill touch one of them. If you guys are planning to attack, I would have you roll initiative. Yeah. All right. Okay. That was not good. Oh. Okay. Um, uh, Lindsay, what was your... Sorry. 20. Uh, okay. Uh, Fletch? 12. Okay. Um... Uh, Oatu, fourteen, fourteen, okay. natural twenty. Okay, so twenty-four. Thirteen. Boo. All right. Well, no, that's good. And uh, Scott, I also have a twenty. Okay. Uh, who has the higher initiative? I have a plus three. I have plus four. Okay. Perfect. All right. Oh, I didn't have an Addy twenty. Uh, oh, got, got 20. you got twenty. Okay, yeah, gotcha. I tied with. Um, uh, okay, wh- what do you have? I have plus two. Okay, gotcha. Okay, so Arlie is the quickest on the draw. You are able to act first. Um, so I'm going to use, for my action, I'm gonna, going to use Hunter Sense. Okay. And I'm going to choose a, the statue that I saw, uh, that I shot at. Okay. Uh, you can choose one creature you can see within 60 feet. You immediately learn whether the creature has any damage immunities, resistances, or vulnerabilities, and what they are. If the creature is not hidden, non-hidden from divination magic, you can use this feature three times. Okay, you learn that this creature is completely resistant to physical attacks and is completely weak to any magical attacks. Your weapons aren't going to work. You need to use magic. Oh, shucks. I'm All out. right. That's my turn. <laughs> okay. It is... Uh, Soger. Soger. Damn it. I was going to call you Soger. <laughs> I kind of like Soger. I'll take, I'll take it. Uh, so he has no magical weapons okay. or anything like that. So he knows he's not going to be able to do anything. So I think what's going to happen is I don't trust that rock. And I'd like to grab onto the wall and just try and muscle that wall down. Very cool. Give everyone more room. Okay. So give me a strength check. Okay. Or I guess that would probably be, that would be opposing strength. So yeah, go ahead. Damn. Uh, ten. Ten. Ugh. Um, you're able to pull, it's, it, it's tough, but you're able to pull it down just a little bit more, kind of give everybody about a foot more of room. Um, are you going to hold it or are you going to release? I'm just planning on just holding it. Okay. Gotcha. So yeah, you're, you're, it's, it's tough, but you think you can hold it for a little bit longer. Okay. Probably more than that rock would have. And you watch as the rock kind of tumbles out. All right. So now it is, uh, Ola's turn. All right. Um, She's going to go ahead and cast mm, Moonbeam at second level. Okay. So that'll create a silvery beam pale light in a five foot radius, which I'll just have centered on. uh, How close are they to each other? Uh, They're within five feet of each other. Okay. So, you know, at them and then a 40 foot high cylinder centered on that point. Um, 
Dim light fills the cylinder. When a creature enters the spell's area for the first time on a turn or starts its turn there, it's engulfed in ghostly flames that cause searing pain and must make a constitution saving throw. And then it takes 2d10 radiant damage. I think it's on their turn. On their turn? Maybe. I'm just going to prep. Okay, so you you guys watch as this massive furbolg kind of... What, what color is your magical energy there? Oh, let's do blue. Okay, so you guys watch as the druid furbolg kind of summons the powers of nature and a bluish hue kind of emanates from her body and she reaches out. Do you have a staff that you use? Or? Um, it's that daisy. It's her. Stay. It is yeah. the daisy. Yeah. Can it be the daisy? Okay, yeah. yeah. That, that works for me. Yeah. So you guys watch as this daisy behind her ear glows blue just and a magical misty dim light uh, of moonlight hits that center um, that center uh, statue and it's within the radius that the others are also hit on the outside and you guys watch as they all (laughs) snap their heads up at the ceiling and crumble to dust. Yeah. All right, there we go. But now, <laughs> as that has happened, you guys hear from behind the other wall. <laughs> oh, no. You can hear oh, something no. trying desperately to get out. That's not good. I oh, think you can do that again. Oh, yeah, I got a few more in me. Um. But it is now... Watu's turn. I apologize. So are there any more on that side of the hallway? They, not on that side. They have all been vanquished. That sucks. Um, is there any way that I can try to move through the hallway? Is there enough space? It takes up pretty much the entire length of the, of the room. And um, who hasn't engaged in combat yet? Fletch and Flem and Awatu. Uh, each of you, you three give me a perception check. And actually, uh, Silger, you can also give me a perception check since you're holding the wall. Oh. Whoa! Silger has a 20. Natural 20. All right. Nice. nice. Cool. I got a 19 roll. Um, 26. 26? 14. Okay, so all of you, but you two specifically, um, notice right away as you're holding this down and you moved it down a little bit, you saw that the wall on the other side moved down a little bit as well. So that pounding sound is louder than I originally indicated because that wall is slightly open. So they seem to be connected mm-hmm. as if pulling down one side would also open the other side. And you all notice that. You two have not yet noticed that. Okay. But Awatu, it is your turn. <clears throat> so I will try to peek into the other side. On the other side, instead of a floating set of statues, uh, two sets, in fact, uh, there are four. F- uh, they were, they are still floating above, but now they're pounding very urgently and screaming ah! Ah! against the back of that wall. But they haven't noticed you. It's as if they're trying desperately to get out. If I may pontificate for a moment... I struggle to convince myself now that these are hostile. (laughs) Those sound like screams of fear to me. Huh. Oh. I didn't think of it as that, but you might be right. I mean, you've seen a lot of stuff, right? You probably know. I've seen some things. Oh, all right. (laughs) I trust him. What do you think? I think we just need to get through the other door. They haven't attacked us, have they? We've attacked them. Are we the baddies? <laughs> <laughs> I think we might be. Might be. Might be. Uh, well, crap. <laughs> well, just to be safe. <laughs> <laughs> I'm gonna roll to attack. <laughs> uh, man, I'm really Ooh. good. 25 with my chill touch, and if there's one, so I'll try to hit two of them that are within five feet of so each gonna, other. You're going to aim for the middle one? Or yeah. one of the middle ones? Yeah. Uh, I can hit two of them with my chill touch. That's part of my cleric oh. ability okay. thingy that I have for my mm. subclass. 
Okay. So you aim for two of them. Um, so you hit the two in the middle, and they stop pounding, and <gasps> and they <laughs> and you watch as the other two statues look down almost sadly, and then <laughs> they both look at you. Uh. Then they <laughs> then they stop floating and drop down. Oh. I think we could talk to them. Flem, it's your turn. After we killed all of them, <laughs> but two of them. Flem probably would try to talk to them. Um, Do like, it. Hello. I'm so sorry um, if we've killed all your buddies, but uh, uh, do you do you want to hurt us? Their their eyes are drawn in anger now. They're scowling, and yeah, they, they don't. don't hurt us. They don't say anything, but you can hear almost like a raspy breathing. I think we've angered them. Best um, to leave no witnesses then. Well, eh, she's going to cast poison spray. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Is that an attack or do I need to roll something? It's um, the creature must succeed on a constitution saving throw or take 1d12 of poison damage. Does a 19 save? I don't know what my... It is it. Where's my... What happens number. if they save? Nothing. 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 Okay. So, so the uh, one of the, the statue you aimed at just like <laughs> slides out of the way, <laughs> and the acid hits the wall and uh, <laughs> or poison. Shit sorry. Here. And they, uh, they there's made no the effect. Save? Is that? What yep. It was? They made the save. Mm-hmm. Oh. Mm-hmm. All right, Fletch. It's your turn. Shit. <laughs> <laughs> well. So, I'm Fletch, and these are my friends, and maybe you can help us out. Flem's we're looking, gonna wave at them. <laughs> we're looking for a gem. Any idea what that may be? Uh, give me a persuasion check. Oh, girl. <laughs> 24. 24. Yes. Okay, oh. the, the raspy breathing kind of calms and you can watch as the the uh, the facial stone muscles in its face kind of relax and it looks kind of sadly at the piles of ash that are on the ground where its friends were um, and it <laughs> and uh, it reaches a hand out to you Fletch as if it's going to as if it wants to touch you I, I look but at it's everyone. But very, it's very slowly. You would be what? able to easily avoid it if you wanted to. Well, shake his hand. I think it's a gesture of friendship. I extend my hand. All right, and it grasps your hand, and immediately, Fletch, you are filled with a vision of a long hallway, <laughs> <laughs> a stair, a staircase going down, and a trap door in the floor. It oh. pops open, kind of like the intro to the, uh, uh, what is it, the... Uh, Tales from the Crypt. <laughs> it's just, you're like flying down the trap door. It goes open. You go down into the darkness for a moment. And then you see a long cavernous hallway with two torches at the end. And you see an altar with a large cylindrical shape on it. And the statue releases your hand. Well, thank you. Sorry about your friends. They... I'm maybe a broom is somewhere hiding around here. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. All right, guys. Hallway, stairs, trap door, torches, altar. Cylinder. S- <laughs> How the fuck do you know about that? <laughs> that was a lot. <laughs> I wasn't going to mention the cylinder because that seems excessive. Oh, it's on no. the altar. <laughs> you looked like you were trying to remember what the No. Was. <laughs> you know what happens when you assume, Elijah? Yeah. You make a huge ass you, of yourself you look and like the only biggest you. fucking I'm dickhead. Good. I'm a lizard folk. I'm still trying to. <laughs> Is Elijah a lizard folk? Because Elijah just sounds like a dick. <laughs> okay. <laughs> I'm no just kidding. <laughs> so, you hear Fletch mention a hallway, stairs, a trapdoor, and an altar, and torches. So, I'm assuming you saw something then? I did. All right. Let's go. Oh, let's go. <laughs> How do we get the door open, though? I assume you either push or pull. But the trap. There's still a trap here. What if it slides? No. 
I suppose that's another option. We can cross that bridge when we get there. I'm going to let go of the wall. You let go of the wall, and <laughs> they both they both <laughs> slide back into the their recesses. Oh, right, out of sight, out of mind. Fish. We did nothing wrong. A <laughs> 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 victimless crime. <laughs> they were statues. <laughs> uh... Could we just pass over the pressure plate? It's 15 feet. Yeah. I can jump it. You can jump 15? Mm-hmm. Oh. Is that what you're going to do? Yeah. All right. So give me an athletics check. Oops. You <laughs> <laughs> oh, can't jump it. So DM and me <laughs> wants to bring up a little 5e rule, if okay. I may. Go ahead. You can jump your strength score if you get a running start. Okay, so if you're going to take a running start. Yeah. All right, so you guys watch as uh, Silger uh, kind of steps back a bit, kind of scratches his feet on the ground, and then takes a running jump and leaps <laughs> over the pressure plate. Now, since you're closer to the door on the other side, you can see, knowing that there is another trap, you can see a tripwire about almost like a millimeter from the actual floor. Yeah, lining that little recessed space right in front of that door. I stare at it for a moment. <laughs> <clears throat> I'm not going to do anything with it. Okay. <laughs> but I will point out, here's the trip wire. I found it. I can disarm it if you'd like. <laughs> no. Go for it. Knock yourself out. Yeah, that sounds good. Sounds like the thing to do. <laughs> Sogar gives a shrug, <laughs> steps back as far as he can without going on the pressure plate, and then he's gonna he's gonna trip the tripwire. <laughs> you gonna trip the tripwire with a finger or a weapon? No, I use the pike. Okay, the pike. It okay. Out last time. Um, give me a wisdom save. Okay. <laughs> uh, fifteen. And now give me a strength save. Uh, boof, 21. 21. Okay, so you watch as after poking that tripwire, it snaps, and from the walls, a bunch of hands <laughs> come reaching out and grab onto the pike and start pulling on it. However, you're able to hold onto the pike, and the arms eventually just recede into the wall. No one takes things from me. <laughs> <laughs> I'll take things from them. <laughs> I'm, I'm genuinely surprised he is somehow turning out to be a fairly decent. Yeah. <laughs> That's why he thinks he's the greatest thief yeah. of all time. <laughs> he's just lucky. Yeah. <clears throat> How far would I be able to jump? What's your strength? Strength score. I'm going to try and do acrobatics to jump. Okay. Give me an acrobatics check. 24. All right. So... Arlie, you take a couple steps back and then very well. How, how do you how do you leap over this thing? I'm gonna leap over and then put my hands behind my head, <laughs> just, just like pirouette through the air and land. Sure. All right. So Arlie, you are now on the other side as well. I'm just gonna leap right over. All right. You have a good strength. Sixteen. Okay. So you also take a running jump and. <laughs> Can I get a little help? I have fourteen strength. Is that enough? What's the it's I don't think so. Okay. For the yeah. pressure plate. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I think I'm going to need some of that help, too. When you got a second. Who are you asking for help? Uh, anybody? <laughs> Arlie, are you going to... Or not Arlie, sorry. Fletch, are you going to try jumping now that you've yelled that? No, I'm not going to try jumping. <laughs> <clears throat> I mean, you have pretty good acrobatics, right? Can I borrow that pike? What are you going to do with it? Ever seen pole vaulting? <laughs> All right. Pass it over. Sure, you catch it. <laughs> <laughs> All right. <clears throat> You're going to attempt to leap over it with the pole. Mm-hmm. With a running start, <clears throat> give me an acrobatics check. Are you fucking serious? Natural 20. Okay, so... <laughs> awesome. Yeah. So you guys watch as Fletch backs up as well. Readies the pike. God, I gotta stop hitting that. Readies the pike, and then starts running at the uh, the section. Slams the pike into the ground right in front of the pressure plate, and launches over. But because it's a natural twenty, he's also able to bring the pike with him as he comes back <laughs> over to the other side, lands, and hands you back your pike. 
quite impressive. <laughs> Thanks. I think Flemeth would um, use wild shape and turn into a spider. Okay. And crawl up the wall. Okay, so oh, yeah. Flemeth uses wild shape. Is that a cantrip for you? Yes. Okay, so you just and not you turn. A trip. What? It's You've not a cantrip. It's just. It's <laughs> with just. A druid. Yeah. I had to re-remember. I've been drinking. <laughs> <laughs> um, uh, but yeah, shh, turns into a little spider and then crawls over to the other side. You get two of those per day. Yeah, well, per rest. Per, per short rest. Yeah. yeah. Okay. So, you do you want to unwild shape or are you going to stay in spider form? Just stay spider for a little bit. Are there any little quirks of your spider form? Like uh, when Herstag, for instance, turns into one, he sews his beard. <laughs> <laughs> um, I don't know. Maybe she still has some flowers stuck in her spider fur. Okay. Gotcha. She's like trying to drag them along. <laughs> yeah, there's a there's a flower design on the, on the back of the spider. So, uh, Ola, you're the only one still on the other side. If I did a run and jump, would that be athletics? It would be an athletics check, yep. All right, well, I'll see what I can do. <laughs> you guys um, see the space on the other side <laughs> is about is not very wide, so you might oh. want to back up. Oh, I thought that was a one. Twelve? Twelve? You take a running jump, Ola, and leap and are just shy of the other side. And as you land on the plate... <laughs> Can I try to do a strength save or anything? <laughs> <laughs> Starfish. So uh, I'll let you do. Give me a dex save real fast, and then it'll tell me if you can do a strength save. I am rolling so bad today. Oh, That'd boy. be four. Oof. You should have reached for her and grabbed her. I know. Her I should have. It wasn't quick enough. <laughs> <laughs> What I did notice, there's an off button right here on the bottom. <laughs> <laughs> oh, blimey! <laughs> there's always an off switch, mate. Uh, 45 damage to you, Ola. Oh, wow. I'm out. So you guys watch as <laughs> Ola gets slammed by these walls and is lying there on the pressure plate. Oh. About a foot away from the edge of the pressure plate. Are you dead or are you unconscious? I'm out. That was unconscious or right. dead? Not probably not dead know? outright. Yeah, well, it would be. It would have to do. Saves? It would have to go. You what is your go. What's your HP? Forty three. What's so your HP? Yeah, forty three. Forty three. And that so was forty five. So, so no, yeah. you you get you get to do a a uh, death save. Okay. So um, go ahead and give me one of those. Do you add anything? To what those? What'd you roll? Eleven. Oh okay. Okay. No, yeah, there's you're no good. Adding to it. I'll so one successful. Hand. Oh, that wasn't it. I'll grab her hand and pull her off the pressure plate. <laughs> okay, so slowly you pull her off of the pressure plate so that her body bleeding out. She's got a bunch of like probably broken bones. <laughs> she's definitely gonna have a scar. Such a bad. <laughs> yeah, she's she's looking real bad. Uh, but she seems like she's hanging in there. Somewhere. She's unconscious, but... I'm okay with <laughs> bringing out Chad. <laughs> I'll do a uh, level two cure wounds. Okay. 13 health points. Okay. 13 health points. So um, that does heal quite a bit back to... Or not that much. Sorry. Uh, a little bit back to Ola. But Ola, your body, while healed a bit, you are going to uh, higher low. Um, hi. You are going to have a broken arm. Okay, that's fair. Still, while this healing has kind of kind of healed you a bit, there's still some definite uh, imperfections in the some, broken arm being one uh, of them. Thanks, some wall-like thanks for contusions. That. <laughs> that didn't go as, <laughs> and, uh, as well as I'd hoped. And when I say broken arm, the, like the bones in your arm are shattered. Your arm is laying limp oh. against your body. It's, it's fine. I'll just kind of tuck it. <laughs> Tucking in your belt. <laughs> okay, so now Ooh. you guys are in front of this door. And you had gotten rid of the tripwire. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Is it locked? Do you want to approach the door? No. <laughs> I think we're good, guys. Good. Okay, so yeah, you guys are in front of this wooden door. It has a ring... Uh, handle, kind of secured into the wall, and there looks like it hasn't been used in a while. 
the ring itself is made of iron and looks actually a little bit rusty. I walk up to it. Okay. Give it a pull. All right. It opens easily. <laughs> it was a pulley. <laughs> <laughs> Mystery solved. All right. And you're in a hallway. Is it the one that I saw? It is the one you saw. This, And you're noticing that this guild hall inside seems... You guys are getting the, the temperature of it now, and it's a lot different inside than the outside looks. Almost as if the outside was constructed in a way to fool. Conceal. To conceal. Ooh. Yes. I think Flem's going to go back to her normal shape now. I feel like walking down a hall as a spider <laughs> would take a really long time. <laughs> so Flem returns. <laughs> and uh, standing there again. Gross. But you guys are staring at this hallway. <laughs> it's dim. There's a torch on a sconce halfway down, which is weird. I say we go forward. Do you guys all go forward? Yep. yep. Sounds good. All right. Uh, what's, uh, does anybody have a pra- passive perception under 10? <clears throat> nope. Nope, I think I'm... And if it matters, I have dark vision nope. as well. Okay. Yep. So yeah, you guys, uh, you guys are just, you guys are being cautious, walking down, and you don't encounter any traps in this hallway. You move through it very quickly, and kind of, when you get to the end, there is a set of steps that go down into a landing. And those of you with dark vision can see that this landing stretches out, and it's a large cavernous room, and there are four doors in the back. However, Fletch, you now know that there is a trap door just at the bottom of these stairs. Mind your step. There is a trap door right there. And he points it out, and you all can see the... It's it's very well hidden, but you, you're pretty sure you can see, like, the etchings in the stone of a uh, of a trap door. How big is it? Uh, it's it, You could fit. Probably, like, ten by... Or five by five. Okay. Is there, like, a little pull to it or no. handle or anything? No, because in your vision, it just popped open. You see along the walls, there are bookcases. And four doors at the back. But that's all that's in this room. It's a large room and a big open space in the middle. Did we need to go in the trap door or avoid it? We went, I went in it, right? Mm-hmm. In. All right. Easy enough, then. And I jump on it. <laughs> you jump on it, nothing happens. Is it, Maybe. So it's made of wood? I've disowned Stone. it without Stone. even trying. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe one of these bookcases. I start pushing. So you walk across the room to the one of the bookcases, left or right? Left. Left. So you go to the left side of the room, and there's two large bookcases filled with books, dusty volumes. These haven't been destroyed, um, but most of the books don't have anything on their bindings. They're mm. all blank, different colors, old. Are there any books that say hidden lever to trap door? There are three, in fact. <laughs> <laughs> um, no, you, uh, yes, the, there, there are none that seem different than the others. I think, Not at first glance. I think Flem would try to cast detect magic to see if anything stood out as maybe a way to open the door. Okay, you cast detect magic. Yeah. Read that out loud, please. Sure. For the duration, you sense the presence of magic within 30 feet of you. If you sense magic in this way, you can use your action to see a faint aura around any visible creature or object in the area that bears magic. And you learn of its school of magic, if any. The spell can penetrate most barriers, but it's blocked by one foot of stone, one inch of common metal, a thin sheet of lead, or three feet of wood or dirt. And, uh, okay, so which side do you go to detect magic? Which side of the... Mm. I'll also go with the left. Okay, so you go to the left, and you look and detect magic, and you can see a faint aura. One of the books on the top shelf has a thin magical line from the aura that is only perceptible to you going down from across the, the uh, stone and leads to one of the doors at the end of the hall, the one on the farthest left. Mm. Another book leads to the second door magically. A third book leads to the trap door. All right. So, um, guys, um, up here on the bookshelf, we've got two books that appear to be linked to those doors in the back there, but I did find one that's linked to the trap door. 
Shall we uh, see what happens? Oh, I think so. All right. She'll pull that book off the shelf. <laughs> okay. The one He's for the trap door? On yes. the trap door. <laughs> Are you still on the trap door? <laughs> yeah. Okay. So you pull the, the book out, uh-huh. and instantly the trap door springs open. So <laughs> give it back. Right yeah, uh, give me a dexterity save. Uh, wow. Eight. eight. Uh, so it pops up surprising you, and you actually go sprawling along the floor, just kind of, it's not painful, but it's its definitely like, oh, you feel probably maybe a little embarrassed, or maybe you don't, I don't As know. As he flies through the air, he shuts up, not what I anticipated. <laughs> <laughs> what a twist. Um, yeah, and the trap door pops open. Far in the distance, beyond those doors, you can hear a rumble. Mm. And then you hear a... Filling the room. A ticking noise of some kind. That's not good. Uh, I'm gonna hop in. You're gonna hop in the trapdoor? I'll follow. Follow? I'll look for a ladder. Look for a ladder? I'm going in. In the, in that, in the trap door. I'm okay, yeah, there is a. There in, <laughs> it's not really a ladder, but there's recessed spots in the wall for hand and feet entry. Okay. I will climb down. Okay. I shimmy down. Okay. Mm-hmm. Take a Go moment down. to look around the room and just see if I can tell what's making those noises. Okay. Um, so you can you can't hear where that ticking's coming from, but you do notice that that rumble is getting louder. I'm hop down. Okay. <laughs> and as you guys hop down, you find yourself in a long hallway. And at the end of this hallway are two torches, about a hundred feet down, and you can see an altar. And you, as you as you all sit there for a moment, kind of getting your bearings, you hear. <laughs> as if four things have slid open and you feel even down there this intense heat as the entire room up there lights up with a golden light as if fire has just completely taken over that room. I'm glad we got out of there. And after a moment it dies down. That's a shame I was going to try and sell some of those books. <laughs> <laughs> Yikes. This way. All right. And you guys walk down the hallway and approach the altar and the torches. I hope that statue vision wasn't lying to me. <laughs> <laughs> On the altar, Maybe it's all true. as you get closer, you can see a large, about one foot long and about one foot in circumference, a big fat cylindrical scroll. That's the one. Does anyone speak infernal? Mm-mm, nope. I'm gonna say no. I do. You do? Yeah. Nice. All right. So, Mr. Owatu, you read clear as day that the scroll says, he who takes will be he who is cursed. And in, the, in one of the runes that's in the shape of a circle in infernal... There is a gem, a dark, almost black gem. Maybe it's, it's, it seems like it might be a dark, dark red, perhaps. It's very, very dark, though, deep. Maybe sunlight would illuminate it a little bit more as to its true color. What's it say? Is that the gem? This is what he wanted, I can, right? I can't read it. You can't read it. Oh, man. Well, this is going to be the gym, right? Give me a deception check. (laughs) (laughs) Not very good. Twelve. Twelve? He he seems to be hiding something, but you're... um, What is everybody's passive insight? Thirteen. Fifteen. Fourteen. So Seventeen. Everyone knows. Yeah. <laughs> Everybody but Fletch <laughs> knows that you're lying. <laughs> well, yeah, well, that's the gym. Let's take it. Let's go. I you, think you should. You sure you can't read? What Hold are you on, up to? I think to? there's something you're not telling hey, us. Hey, what do you want well, about? Nothing. Oh, okay. You trying to put one over? <laughs> it says he who takes shall be cursed. Mm, that's that's easy enough. I didn't want to be the one to take it. <laughs> yeah. 
Um, does it matter if your arm's broken? <laughs> Maybe just tie it around it? Probably. <laughs> no, if you don't mind, we could just cut the arm off, use that to do oh, a little oh, grabby, really nice. and then we could take it out. It's not a bad idea. And then feed it to him <coughs> when we're done. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Dinner and a show. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I think it's. Do a you good think? Idea. <laughs> do you think this arm's ever gonna get repaired? No, not a chance. Yeah, it, it's might, gone, it's might gone. as well. Then I guess I'm. I'm not attached. Well, I mean, I'm technically <laughs> attached, but. Yeah. <laughs> 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 uh, <laughs> all right. Who's chopping it? Oh my god. That, <laughs> that, that didn't take a lot of convincing. Um, Way too why, easy. Uh, why does so much of our stuff end up with <laughs> I like it. I have a hand axe. Well, do you a have an arm axe though? <laughs> with eating your Five arm, experience. So. Uh, um, let me see. I don't think I have a appropriate weapon. Hmm. I don't. I threw my dagger. I would not. Also, be that fun would to, <laughs> Yeah, that would not be fun to <laughs> take an arm off with a dagger. I mean, what would be the best? He's got a hand that? axe. I have a scimitar. I don't. I have a hand axe too. That'd be a good one for chopping an arm Ch- off. Yeah, why yeah. is Ch- why was this our first <laughs> idea? <laughs> Because like someone. Awatu is into it, but I'm like, why? Are we I guess I guess we could explore other options. <laughs> like put a n- napkin over it. <laughs> Maybe a bag. Is there a way to know how smart this damn curse is? Right. Like, uh, maybe if somebody detected magic on it, or well, I can't do well, that. So. Detect magic lasts ten minutes. Ooh. Within thirty feet. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Well, that just yeah. tells you that it's magic, right? Yeah. It is. It is and magical. What magic. Yeah, it is. Cool what's cool? Uh, shit. Um, it de- it detects that there is a very strong and powerful curse associated with this scroll and stone, and you see it emanating off it, and you can tell that it is an en- from the school of enchantment. I don't know what to do with that. <laughs> <laughs> um. Well, I don't think we want to mess with this curse. It seems like pretty real heavy stuff. We need to figure something out. Well, I've dealt with curses before, and I think I have just the trick. Uh, he's going going to cast Protection from Evil and Good. Now, he thinks it's going to do something, but I don't think it's going to do what he thinks it is. <laughs> um, what does he think it's going to do? <laughs> well, he thinks it's just going to protect him from anything evil. Gotcha. But um, this is what it actually does. Um, creatures of those types, uh, like, like I choose a type of creature, uh, aberration, celestials, elemental, fey, fiends, and undead. Mm-hmm. Uh, but then, uh, they have disadvantage on attack rolls against me and I can't be charmed, <laughs> frightened, or possessed by them. Okay. Uh, and he's just going to think of like fiends and demons and okay. stuff. Okay. Gotcha. Okay, so you guys watch. Uh, so you cast that? Oh, well, it does get consumed. Holy water or powdered silver and iron. Okay. But he could probably cast it one time and then... Yeah. So you, you guys watch as Arlie... Uh, how do you cast this spell, Arlie? Well, I'm going to pull out holy water. Okay. And I'm just going to sprinkle it on myself. So you watch him, like, <laughs> misting himself. <laughs> and then I'm going to rub it's my hands like together, that. and then I'm going to try and grab the stone. Okay. So you grab the stone, Arlie. Just the stone or the scroll too? The stone. Okay. The minute you touch the stone, everyone, everyone, give me a wisdom save. And I will go around here. Okay. Starting with you, Arlie. 16. Okay. Oof. Ola. 25. All right. Fletch. Five. Okay. <laughs> 18. 11. 17. Okay. Um, sorry, what was yours again, Arlie? Uh, 16. 17. 11. 11. <laughs> I forgot. And 18. 18. Okay. <laughs> I didn't listen when you told me. <laughs> Sorry, I got confused. <laughs> Anyone with a 15 or lower, raise your hand. We'll do it that way. Sorry, 16 or lower. You guys, the three that did not do that, you guys watch as your three companions immediately disappear. <laughs> In a scream of pain. Ah! 
that sounded very painful. <laughs> You three um, <laughs> are dead. Oh. Whoa. Oh, shit. Oh, damn. What? We didn't fucking what take the it. What kind of enchantment is that? Well, how did, are their how did we... Still there? Yeah. They, no, they just completely disappear. Their possessions? Well, did we just get I'm disintegrated, get or how did we die? <laughs> you guys completely disintegrated, like disappeared. The only thing that remains is you guys watch as Fletch disappears. Tink. Tink, tink. That little summoning stone drops to the stones. We can't even take their things. <laughs> <laughs> what just happened? Burr, burr, burr. <laughs> <laughs> do, you, do you know how the summoning stone works? Nope. Oh, <laughs> I like how cavalier you guys are. Like, well, well. Uh, is the stone loose? The, the stone is not loose. Uh, the moment he touched it, they disappeared. <laughs> <laughs> the person who knew had like what was wrong with it totally disintegrated Shoot. without saying anything. <laughs> Man, I'll stop Glenn. <laughs> uh, I suppose I will pick up the stone. And okay, I'm gonna hold it and I'll be like, uh, "Hello, the master. Um, we could use some help." Three forms appear before you. Please describe your replacement characters. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, go ahead with you first, Tomas. Um, so out of the dark hallway, uh, this really, really big, uh, crusty, like, yellow-green lizard folk that's super ripped. <laughs> I, must, I gotta specify. Uh, he's jacked. <laughs> shows up. Uh, he's also got bone armor and that same symbol that he had on oh. his shield. And, and he wields a big great, great axe made out of the scapula of a big beast. Um, Owatu, you recognize this lizard folk immediately. Brother. <laughs> so you made it out. <laughs> I did. <laughs> <laughs> you as well. Somehow. Good. <laughs> 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 Don't touch the stone. All right. <laughs> um, <laughs> Michaela, <laughs> did you not prepare a backup character? <laughs> I didn't have enough slots. Oh, um, but I. Go ahead. I have some. Okay. I can I can use one. Okay, gotcha. You can you if you want to reskin one of the characters you do currently no, have. No, I am. Okay. So please describe the entry of your character. With a loud thud, a very squat and round gnome woman falls to the floor. <laughs> mm-hmm. Frying pan in hand. <laughs> <laughs> Her name is Mixie. <laughs> yes. Nice. I love Mixie. All right. So you guys see this gnome woman. Do you want to say anything, Mixie? All right, what are we doing here? Anybody want to respond? We are <laughs> not touching the stone. <laughs> you are these cursed. people. Son, do you have a cold? <laughs> <laughs> hmm. The stone is cursed. I start digging around in my pockets looking for a lozenge. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Stephanie. All right, so I'm playing Glint Stormchapel, um, and she's a dwarf um, fighter. Okay. She's been around the block a couple times, and she's, like, so over everything. And <laughs> jaded. She can't and, even. Yeah. <laughs> she's just like, all right. She starts walking in. What do we got here? What are we doing this time? <laughs> and you guys, you guys uh, remember them. You've worked with them once or twice, uh, these others, but uh, except for... Uh, yeah. This guy, he's he's a yeah. newcomer. Have not met any of these people. Mm-hmm. All right, so now our new group has formed. <laughs> we need to find a way to transport the stone back to town without touching it. Why don't we just kill the stone? <laughs> <laughs> it's a good idea, <laughs> but we need to bring the stone back to our employer. So do you eat people too? 
No. <laughs> <laughs> For the audience's benefit, Awatu was very quickly shaking his head. <laughs> Uh, he also has bones all over him. <laughs> Clearly some of them human. Uh, so, new companions here. What do you guys want to do? Uh, my name is Zelkis, by the way. Zelkis. I say that. Yes. And it was Glint? Glint. Glint. Okay. Um, <laughs> I'm at a loss. Did have we have we tried chopping anybody's arm off or you know we were gonna try that we were talking <laughs> about it that'd be my best guess <laughs> be my first guess mm-hmm. <laughs> I mean we could still try that what happened when you grabbed it um three of our companions disintegrated right. there, there's currently the dust at your feet right there let's that uh, let's yeah. not touch that that's, again that's then them. This little smudge here was flame. Right there. Glint's just like frowning and looking down on it like, ugh. <laughs> <laughs> Pathetic. I grab some of the ash and I just rub it on my face. <laughs> the, he grabbed uh, Arlie's ash. <laughs> what a touching memorial. <laughs> so that's good. <laughs> why why did right. you do that? It looks cool. Oh, hey. Scares the right. enemies. Hey. It's a lizard folk thing. Are there enemies? I'll here? do the same. I'll do the same. <laughs> so you grab the With, nearest uh, pile? Yeah. Fletch's pile is the nearest to you? Okay. <laughs> so I smear Fletch on my face. <laughs> The world sure is me. weird when you get off a mountain. <laughs> <laughs> huh. Well, I mean, we could chop off my arm. What if we tried, like, lassoing it up, though? Like, with the rope, just tie it on up and carry it around? You should try <laughs> that. <laughs> <laughs> you should try finishing sentences. <laughs> All right. I'll I'll try to tie a rope around the stone. Like a like okay. Without a touching rope. it. Carefully. Okay, so it's it's kind of pressed into the scroll itself. That would be a very difficult task. <laughs> <laughs> it's embedded in there. It can't be pulled out. I mean, I not with a rope. Someone already tried to pull it out. That thing happened. Is is the stone around the gym magic or is it just the gym scroll the the scroll scroll um yes uh the well you wouldn't know that i guess yeah. but oh uh, yeah yes <laughs> the one in here is didn't quite have a currently on uh, these guys' face yeah. <laughs> can i just grab the pedestal and then you can attempt I don't we'll have just a carry that out character. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> go ahead and uh, i can't carry the ring, Mr. Frodo. <laughs> <laughs> I'll carry you. I can carry you. Uh, yeah, give me a strength check. All right. A 16. Um, you grab and you start pulling and you feel like if you got maybe some help, you guys could carry this altar. altar. It's heavy-ish. Altar. Yeah. Heavy enough that you're going to need help, but you think that it's it's manageable. You you, you think you could move it. What is old I'll, boy doing? I'll help him. So you see him struggling here and... Pull? Yeah, strength. Oh, okay. You have one arm. <laughs> That's right. Yeah. That's true. The stone. How about, how I'll about, still <laughs> try. Here, I'll, I'll help. I'll help. You don't Zelkis have to. Zelkis has big muscles. Zelkis is just going to glare at everyone <laughs> <laughs> and then just keep watching. I got 10. 10? Mm, with one arm that with one you arm. just ha- have one arm underneath <laughs> it. It's not enough. <laughs> You're not doing anything. Here, move over. <laughs> Let me do it. Okay. Give you a strength check. Strength check. Mm-hmm. 19. Oh, okay. So, yeah. The two of you, that's more than enough. Okay. Nice. So, the half orc and the dwarf kind of grab it, and you guys start like sidewalking with it. All right. <laughs> so, they don't seem to be disintegrating. No. <laughs> okay. They have not yet disintegrated. <laughs> We're not dust. That's a good sign. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to go up to Oatu and I'm going to start whispering to him What are you doing with these people? I'm biding my time. I was waiting for you. Do we hear them? I cozy on up in there. Are we gonna Boys, eat them? Secrets to you, my <laughs> friends. <laughs> Who are you? 
<clears throat> Mixy Yarnborough, and I think everyone might want to hear what you're discussing. I'm going to growl at her. Do you know I'm Infernal? I'm going to try and intimidate her. And you know Infernal? Zelgus? No. I know Draconic, though. In Draconic, we can speak. Does anybody speak Draconic? Raise your hand. No. Okay. Oh, no. All right. So <laughs> go ahead. <laughs> your best if I fall, you must take the claw. You won't fall. You make sure of that. I thought I did. I mean, going forward. (laughs) You were supposed to get away. Make sure of that going forward. (laughs) Look after you and the claw. Yes. Yes. (laughs) And eat eat the others. What does it sound like to us, Yeah, give me a draconic... (laughs) Do draconic. No. I don't know how to speak draconic. It just sounds like... (laughs) <laughs> it's just pig Latin. Ake <laughs> the the law K. Fuss rota. <laughs> so yeah, you guys hear them like gravelly, like barking at each other. Well, uh, and then uh, huh. Oatu will assist with carrying the altar. Okay. And uh, the load is lightened for all of you, and you can walk a lot more comfortably. So do you want to head back? Yeah. Yes, very much. Okay. So you guys head back. Uh, how are you going to get up the ladder? What would you oh, like to do shit. to get up the ladder? Ropes. Ropes? <clears throat> okay. So you guys lash ropes. Who's going up top first? <laughs> I'll go up top first. <laughs> all right. So Mixie climbs up top. And then I'll toss down my rope. Okay. And uh, you're looking around, and you see that the entire room looks like it's just been hit by a huge scorching blast of some kind. Did someone leave a candle burning up here? (laughs) (laughs) The room exploded. It was like that when we got here. Conflicting stories, boys. (laughs) It exploded before we got here. After we got here. (laughs) I don't understand. (laughs) I'll let you decide on your story and you'll lie. (laughs) Okay, but is it going to explode again? Maybe. Maybe. (laughs) All right. What does explode mean? Fire. (laughs) (laughs) Have the little one go first. She already has. (laughs) So, uh, anybody else going up? I'll I'll head up with you my do, one arm. Okay, yeah. Not you, letting it hold me back. <laughs> <So> you, climb, <laughs> <laughs> you very carefully climb up um, with your one arm and get to the top. Um, did you guys want to secure the rope around the altar? Yeah. Okay, you guys tie a nice little tight knot. And uh, do you want to stay down there or you want to climb up? So at least one person should stay down to stabilize it. And then okay. the rest of us can like heft it up. Who's stand down? Glink's gonna go up because she's not super tall. I'll stay, stay down. Okay, yeah, I will I'm stay. Good. I'm not staying down. No. You go up. I'm going. No, you go. You go up. We stay together. We both go up. <laughs> so you're not staying down. We now? both go up. <laughs> <laughs> so everybody's up now. I'll go back down. <laughs> <laughs> so you climb back. The half orc climbs back down to stabilize. And uh, everybody up top, are you all going to assist in pulling? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Okay. So with your strength combined and with his gentle prodding to make sure that it stays stable. Captain Planet. Yeah. <laughs> something, something, Captain Planet. Um, you guys are able to lift it through the hole. And it. the weird thing is, is that it, the altar perfectly fits like, like a glove slides right up as mm. if that was the way it was brought down here, perhaps. And you guys are able to uh, inch it over the edge and set it down. <laughs> what a weird puzzle. <laughs> <laughs> Lift altar with stone. <laughs> um, and uh, yeah, now you guys are standing in the burned room. Would you like to continue on? I think we should leave the burned room before it burns again. Mm-hmm. Agree. Okay, so you guys make your way up the stairs and... Very carefully, 
through that hallway and out that door. And now you are in the room with the pressure plate. Crap. Oh, son of a oh. bitch. I can't turn into a spider anymore. Hmm. Well, can't you one more time? Oh, wait, no. <laughs> yeah. She, no, she can't yeah. do anything one more time <laughs> no. except die. Yeah. Flim's more. on your face right now. <laughs> <laughs> How are we going to get this thing over? I don't know. So I'm assuming that this is like a, a trap or something. We can't just walk through here. Is oh, that why yeah. we stopped? This, uh, this whole 15-foot square right here, you step on it, these two big walls with some creepy statues behind them will go squish, and then... <laughs> That's how her arm got all messed yeah, up right this, there. This old thing. Yeah. <laughs> she worthless now. <laughs> yes. Just a little bit. Laid down on platform. <laughs> <laughs> we walk over. <laughs> it doesn't work that way, unfortunately. <laughs> no. It will continue to smash. There's still be weight on the platform. I don't know what they mean. <laughs> <laughs> How much does the altar weigh? Um, it's pretty heavy. It's probably close to about 200 pounds, 300 pounds, somewhere in there. <clears throat> or I get, well, it'd probably be closer to 500. It's pretty, it's heavy enough that they have trouble lifting it by themselves, mm-hmm. but combined, it's not as hard. If you turn the altar on its side... Does the stone, would the stone still be affixed to it? It seems like the scroll is affixed to the altar somehow. Is this platform the only way out of the door? As far because as you've been able to intimate. But we could, like, search? Could we? Sir. There's gotta trip. be another way. <clears throat> could if we trip the trap and set the altar on top of the walls so they don't fly back up? Make our way across, and then grab the altar. For investigation, I rolled 17, if um, there's another way out. As far as you can tell, you can't really see a different way out except the path ahead of you. Dang. Say again. <laughs> <laughs> Could we trip the trap, wait for the walls to smash down, Set the altar on top. So they don't fly back up. <laughs> I don't feel like saying that. <laughs> and uh, use the weight of the altar to hold the walls down. Make our way across over the walls. And then grab the altar once we move it across. Hmm. How we trigger platform. Big one lay down. <laughs> <laughs> altar go on top. Oh. What? He trips traps. Pull him. I pull out my pike. <laughs> it's a long stick. You poke it on the ground right there. And shoosh, go to walls. All right. That, that works. Okay. So you guys are going to attempt to do that. All right. So give me... Uh, who's going to be moving the altar? Glint will help. Okay. I'll do it. Okay. And Are who, you also triggering the platform? Yeah. No. Who's going to so trigger the figured, platform? You know, the strong people should be doing the altar, so maybe... I w- can trigger it. Old one arm. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> old one arm. <laughs> Ola one arm. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. All right. So, Ola, you get prepared with the pike, and who who... Raise your hand if you're lifting the platform, or the altar. Okay. So the four of you. And Mixie, what are you doing? I'm just going to step back and see if there's anything I can I can do while this happens. Okay. Um, it doesn't seem like that seems to be... You, you've never encountered this room before, so you're not really sure what to expect. So, no. <laughs> there's not much to do. No, I'm, like, waiting for the walls to come down. Oh, I thought you were trying to find see, something else to do. No, I'm trying to see if, like... I need to put more weight on it okay. or something like that. Gotcha. So just like a, you're sitting there perceiving. So you guys trip the trap. You four that are you moving the altar, all of you give me dex saves. I 
15. Okay, so two of you are able to, you guys kind of... Disintegrate. <laughs> no, you guys are closer. <laughs> we'll say you two are closer to the wall when it comes down. And uh, so it's a little bit more awkward for you, but these two kind of brute strength it over and it ends up getting tossed. You guys lose your grip and it gets them getting tossed, <sighs> landing in the center of the wall. But it's quick enough that it keeps it down. Ah. You guys can see the two statues behind there. Those of you who have not seen these statues before, the two remaining statues, are watching very um, interestedly, but not doing anything else. Do we need to worry about them? Stone ghosts. <laughs> Pay them to Kill the them. No. 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 <laughs> <laughs> I, no. I hiss at the statue. <laughs> <laughs> it's good. I like that. All right. Did so they respond? No. Didn't react at all. Bitch. <laughs> <laughs> That's what I thought. Yeah, stay, stay there. <laughs> okay, right, uh, Mixie, um, you watch as, they, as the walls come down, and you can see these two stone statues there. And since you're very... You're, you're paying more attention to what's going on as opposed to anything else, you notice... That these, um, as as interested these statues look, they also seem to look at this altar. They, their eyes don't move away from the altar, and they almost have a reverence to it, or like a an awe or fear. Not something that they like, kind of shy from, but just as if they're keeping a respectful distance from. So you notice that. Owatu is gonna grab his uh, this black claw that he has. Uh, dangling from a necklace around his neck okay. with uh, several other c- claws there. And um, he's going to cast uh, False Life on okay. himself. So Black Mist is going to come out of his his free hand and like kind of settle around him. Okay. Describe that spell. Um, false Life. Bolstering, bleh, bolstering yourself with a necromantic a simile of life, you gain 1d4 plus 4 temporary hit points for the duration. Okay, so roll them HPs. 4. Sick. Plus 4? So 8 total. Nice, so 8 temp HP. So you guys, he's engulfed in this black magical energy. And then I'm gonna walk across the wall. Okay. And you watch as this lizard folk walks across the wall. And now that you're close up to those statues, you notice that the statues aren't looking at you at all, Oatu. They're just staring at the altar. I'll hop and hop up and follow. Okay. And I'll start pulling the altar towards me. Okay. <laughs> as I'm walking. Give away. me a strength check. <laughs> uh, nineteen. Okay. Yeah, you're slowly able to move it by yourself. It's you know it's slow going, but um, what are the rest of you guys gonna do? Clint's going to run across the wall. Okay. Same. To the other side. Mm-hmm. So, yeah, you guys cross the rest of you as, um, what's your name again? Zelkus. Zelkus is sliding it slowly to the other side. And uh, you guys all reach the side safely, on the, you know, from the wall. I stand there and I... Are you going to cross or no? Yeah, I'm going to okay. start crossing, but I'm going to stop on there and try to have a conversation with the statues. Okay. What are you going to say? Gentlemen, is that something we can help you with? I'm going to keep pulling okay. regardless. <laughs> All right. <laughs> um, they are. They seem to ignore you, Mixie, and they're just staring at the altar. As it moves slowly, their eyes track it. Hmm. I look to the altar and I try to see if, if it's doing anything different. Um, it's, it isn't doing anything different per se, but... As it passes between, like, you're standing there, I imagine, and as it passes kind of by, it's almost as if there's, like, this weird magnetic spell energy. Not harmful at all, but just this, like, almost like electricity, like static electricity kind of passes between, like, almost in a column from where they're looking and where the altar is. And it kind of passes through you. There's definitely some tie between those statues and the altar. Gotcha. Gotcha. Are they reaching for it or anything, or just looking at it? They're just looking at it. Well, I don't know what that means. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so you guys get the altar across. You guys are across, and the door or the walls <laughs> slam up. And as you approach the door, you hear, <laughs> and you can see 
the, the walls start to slowly move down again, and you can see that those statues are pushing the wall down, and they climb out from behind in their recessed space, and they slowly begin to follow you guys. Seth, that's so creepy. <laughs> I'm, I'm <Ugh>. sorry. <laughs> <clears throat> but they just stand silently. If the altar doesn't move, they don't move. But if the altar moves, they move. You're sure we don't need to worry about those guys? Well, this is a kind of new development, so maybe we do? They're not hurting anybody. Just let them follow. All right. Yeah, we should probably go. I'm kind of want to do something with my arm here. Right. Now, if they do turn aggressive, uh, they can only be armed by magic. Oh, that's good to know. I will. So, not the frying pan. Right. No. Unless it's a magic frying pan. No. I would prefer <laughs> to take them down <laughs> if they attack. Are you casting anything, or are you just saying? I'm just, I'm just, you know, blocking backs as we <laughs> okay, move gotcha. out of the house. And you guys move through the house, and uh, the moment you guys all exit with the altar and those stone statues come out as well, you guys watch <laughs> the guild hall behind you slowly begins to crumble and kind of suck into a single point. <laughs> 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 and as if it was just sucked into oblivion, it disappears, leaving a massive empty spot and a hole in the ground or a basement or a cellar of some kind may have may have been. I've seen a lot of things, but I don't think I've ever seen that before. I've seen that before. <laughs> <laughs> We've seen everything. Lots. <laughs> I find that is poor design. I mean, you take one item out of your house and then it's gone. <laughs> <laughs> Weak foundations. <laughs> I say so. <laughs> well, we're not going that way. We're going this way. <clears throat> so you guys head down the path. Back to the boats. Like, Are the statues like still following us? Yes, they slowly follow you. And as you load the altar into the boat whichever boat the altar is in you watch as those statues climb into the boat as well and the boat actually like is riding pretty low in the water because of all this weight okay what do you guys want to do who's in what boat obviously I am in the altar boat (laughs) just kidding (laughs) no I'm not I guess we'll just start rowing. Okay. Well, who's in which boat? Oh. Uh, the heavier ones should probably be in a boat, like a separate boat from mm. the altar. I'm quite heavy, so I will be in the non-altar boat. Woo! I'll squeeze on into the altar boat. Okay. You start paddling. Scoot over! Let me in! <laughs> <laughs> you start paddling. Um, you guys notice immediately when you get in the boats and that you start kind of piloting them through the swamps. The forest and swamp themselves have gotten very, very silent. And everyone, give me a deck save. <coughs> oh, shit. <laughs> Did anyone do okay on this deck save? <laughs> Hell yes. Seven. All right. There's an effect I can Nine. see. Nine. Mm, <laughs> yes. I got an 11. Who got... Anybody get below 10? I got so a 10. So below 10. You got a 10? Mm-hmm. Okay. Anybody else below? Just you two? Yeah. Okay, so immediately swarms of mosquitoes start going after you guys. And you guys, you two, uh, Silger and Ola, you guys get it the worst. These mosquitoes are just getting you so bad. The rest of you are able to like kind of smack them off and it's just annoying. I'm, I'm chomping day. at them. Yeah. <laughs> <You're> chomping. <laughs> And then you guys notice that some of these water moccasins in in the swamp suddenly swim across the top and climb into the boat. And you guys are noticing that some of the animals in the swamps now are, if if you're picking it up, that they're all kind of targeting you. Snakes will climb in and you guys will chop them down. The mosquitoes come after you. A bird swoops down and one of you guys cuts it out of the air. There's, it's weird that the animals seem to have turned on you. They're coming at us, not at the altar. They're coming at you, yes. Jim gives us free food. 
<laughs> this is a up. good gem. <laughs> I'll pick up one of the snakes and eat it. Okay. So you guys, this happens the entire trip back to Three Bridges. And you, as you get closer and closer to the portcullis, um, you watch as you, you see the guard at the portcullis stare at you almost in horror as you guys approach. His eyes look angry. And the minute you guys are within a few feet of him, within about 10 feet of him, he draws his sword. Everyone roll initiative. Natural 20. 20 total. 20. Okay. 23. Okay, so Owatu, you see him draw his sword. The guard is kind of on the kind of uh, outcropping of the portcullis. He's not in a boat, but his reach is within five feet of you. So what do you want to do, Owatu? Um, I'll cast spiritual weapon. Okay. So this... Uh, <clears throat> you see a, a skeletal hand appear in a space kind of between us and this guard. And I'm not going to attack with it. It's just going to float there, just kind of ready. And that'll be my turn. Okay. And, uh... All right, uh... Fuck, I forgot your name again, Tomas. Zelkis. Zelkis. Uh, how far away is that guy? Five feet. So I can just walk up to him? Uh, you're in a boat. But you can stand and attack him. <laughs> okay. Well, I'm gonna... You could try leaping out of the boat at him. I'll do that. Okay. And, uh, I'm going to rage. All right. Um... Then I'm yeah I'm gonna hit him. Okay, give me the attack roll. Uh, seven? No, wait, no. Uh, thirteen. Thirteen. Your attack misses on the guard. You swing. What do you have? What weapon? Great axe. Great axe. So your great axe. He dodges out of the way, and his rage seems to be focused on you now. Well, I'm gonna attack him again. Okay. Uh, that should hit for sure. Eighteen plus. That hits. All right. Plus two for rage. Uh, 13 damage. 13 damage? Yeah. All right. So you cleave a nice fucking rend into him, just... And he cries out, but his eyes are still focused on you. And he takes a swing. And what's your AC? 16. He does not hit. He swings wide, and you're able to duck underneath his blade. Uh, Mixie. Sorry, uh, and then on deck is Scott, and then after that, Lindsay. How close am I? You're within five feet. Perfect. I pull out my mace. Okay. And I start swinging it around. And you attack him? Yes. Okay, give me an attack roll. Natural 20. All right, so... Mm. This is the most I've ever rolled natural 20 ever. <laughs> This must be the environment. Okay, uh, so we Indiana do. Indiana suits me. We do. Uh, we do crits a little bit differently on the on uh, D twenty Syndicate podcast. So we do the max damage that it could possibly do, and then roll additionally. Okay, so that's going okay. to be nine as the max. Nine's your max. Yeah, it's a D six plus three. Okay. Oh no, plus your. Yeah. And, okay. Okay. And then I'm doing this. Gotcha. And. Uh, Six, 15. 15 damage. Okay, he takes a nice flail right to the fucking head. He just... Uh, I'll kill you. I'll kill you. He keeps yelling, I'll kill you. I'll kill you. And now his focus is on you, Mixie. Uh. <laughs> Mr. Half-Orc. I keep forgetting your name. Silger. Silger. I'm so sorry. I will look to whoever is in the, uh, I guess Mixie's in the, mm-hmm. the altar boat. And yep. be like, row faster. <laughs> <laughs> and then I'm going to hop up onto the pier. Okay. Uh, and then I produce my maul, and I'm going to try and hit him with my maul. Okay. Give me an attack roll. So I get to attack twice. Natty 20 nice. and uh, 18 natural plus... You hit. (laughs) Okay, so... I like to say it. (laughs) That's a 25 hit. It definitely does. Um, Okay, roll your your damage there. So the 20s... 
I take the max? Mm -hmm. Yep. Okay, so the mole was 2d6 plus 4, so that's 12. And then another. 16. 5 is 17, plus 4 is 21. And then I hit him again just for fun. 25. 29 total. 29 total? Show me what you got. Describe this for me. Okay, so um, he's going to jump up on the pier, and like this dude's all distracted looking over there saying, I'm going to kill you. And I come down and I swing with the maul and I clip his legs out from under him. And then while he's twisting sideways in the air, I'm going to bring it down onto his back and just smash him into the pier. <laughs> so you guys watch this amazing display of physical prowess. Just <laughs> the most uh, sh- strengthy thief you've ever seen in your life. <laughs> and just, yeah, chops his legs out from underneath him. And then in midair, just poof, And he actually cracks the pier with the force of his attack. Um, and the guard is dead. I'm gonna right. I'm gonna wrench his arm and chop it off <laughs> with my great axe. <laughs> All right, you were able to take his arm off. Then I hop back in the boat. <laughs> As I'm rowing with my frying pan, I yell back, "Why are the town's guards trying to kill us?" <laughs> and no one responds. Ah. <laughs> Smooth people. Smooth people, crazy. We eat them. No, we don't. I no, don't. we don't. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, then I look at the arm. <laughs> hide it. Hide it. Hide it throw it yeah. over <laughs> with a wet flop. I'm, <laughs> I'm pushing the body into the water. Okay. Know, get rid of the evidence. Yep. And it since it's got a hole in it, it sinks there to the go. bottom really quick. Job well done, Mixie. <laughs> since you're in the lead here with that boat, you. All of a sudden, in front of you, see this wall of magical energy appear. Oop. And along <laughs> along the pier, along the side, the a masked man who you've worked with in the past steps out with his robes and his very dramatic flair, but he's got two robed individuals with him as well. And as he steps out, he says, Oh, I'm sorry, but I'm going to need... That artifact, um, if you'll please just pause for a moment, I will make sure I can take it off your hands. What about that hundred gold? Oh, yes, of course, of course, of course, please. And he looks over at one of the robed individuals, and the robed individual nods and reaches into his cloak, and this big, fat, jingling coin purse is produced, and he tosses it to you, Ola, Give me a deck save. (laughs) (laughs) Way better than I thought it'd be. She wants that gold, I guess. (laughs) You said deck save? Mm -hmm. 20. 20. Okay, so you snatch the the Mm. bag out of the air, and you open it up, and you can see there's a ton of coin in there. Maybe even more than the original 600 gold that was going to be promised. All right, and a tip. I'll take it. And uh, he nods to the other robed individual, and he you can see a, a uh, emaciated, almost skeletal hand is produced from the robes, raises the hand up at the altar, and you can see that the stone in the, sc- in the scroll lights up and slowly floats off of... It's pulled out, slowly floats up in the air, and he turns his hand over and the stone floats above his hand and he nods to the masked individual in the wooden mask and he uh, you can see like a almost a cone or an orb kind of surround it and he just keeps his hand floating there and the masked individual uh, steps out a little bit further I'm I'm terribly sorry my friends but unfortunately um, we can't allow you access back into three bridges um, you understand, of course, anyone who has gone into the guild hall to retrieve the scroll, the, uh, the curse on the, on the scroll causes anyone to seek them out to kill them. And I'm, I'm sorry, that would just be too much of a bloodbath. So, please, thank you for your help, but fuck off back into the swamps. Right, right. All right. Uh, we get stone. Kill man. The stone will kill you. Why do you want it for? 
I don't know. If there's nothing else, my uh, fine chaps, I will be on my way. Harry, I've been working with you for how many years now? About 30 years? What the fuck? I'm sorry, Mixie. That's just, just business. And he turns and starts walking away. Oh, I don't fucking think so. I'm going to huck a hand axe at the back of him. At the back oh. of him? Yeah. Okay. Uh, give me an attack. <laughs> I feel like Glint would probably try to shoot at him. Now we'll use the same initiative. Let's okay. just keep it that easy. Okay. Um, that'll be a surprise attack there. Well, I was an 18. 18? It hits. 10. 10? Yeah. Okay. So you... What, you... <laughs> Oh, 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 that was it. Four of that was necrotic, by the way. Uh, oh, his countenance beneath the mask kind of changes. You can see his eyes kind of lull a little bit as he turns to look at you. Oh, oh, uh, don't feel so good. Go, he he says to the one holding the stone, and that guy disappears. And he kind of sits down. I I give up. I give up. I just don't don't attack me anymore. I'm, you know, you've got your gold. Please just just go, just 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 go. Glint's gonna walk up to him and take off his mask, or try to at least. Okay. Uh, Glint walks up. The other robed individual doesn't do anything, hmm. and you take his mask off, and there's just a plain-looking human there. And you notice though when you look away, Glint you for immediately forget what his face looks like. Mm-hmm. It's the most plain, forgettable face you've ever laid your eyes on. It's human, and that's all you're pretty sure you remember. To the point that if someone, like a narrator, tried to describe this face, <laughs> <laughs> you wouldn't remember what he said. We kill him, man. Please, yes. you have your gold, you have your gold, just... just Please, I'm going to run up to him and attack him. Okay. Anybody else going to attack him? I'd probably no. try to get information out of him. <laughs> like, Natural on a one. Second. Natural <laughs> one. Okay, yeah, you're running uh, high or low? Low. <laughs> so you are running at him, and you trip over a cobblestone and just go sprawling as you're running at him. It's a very embarrassing <laughs> fall. <laughs> Cool. <laughs> you watch your brother just biff it. <laughs> oh. <laughs> that looked bad. P- please, please. It's it, Like I said, it's only business, but you, you're you cursed now. Please don't enter the, the city because they the townsfolk will turn on you, and I can't control that. Oh. Why aren't you Why turning aren't on you us? Why are attacking us? Yeah. I've, 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 I've got some something set in place. It, it's... It, it's it's not important, but... It seems pretty important to me. Uh, it's... I, I'm not of this plane. I'm not affected by it, so mm. I won't turn on you. But anyone on this material plane will turn on you. What What are you going to do with that stone? What does it do? It, it's a, a stone of great power, and it... Oh, fucking shit. Uh, <laughs> my fucking back. Can you take this hatchet out? I can't reach it. I don't no. think you want us to take I don't it think out. I will. Uh, uh, Anyway, it's a uh, it's it's used to open open a, a portal. It'll open a portal uh, to to a different plane. Uh, I'm trying to get home. Uh. Harry, I can cure your wounds, but I need a little bit more information. Uh, uh, what, what what do you want to know? Where are you from? Why are you trying to go home? Why are these people going to kill us? Uh, I'm 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 from a place called the Starlight Plane, and this the scroll is cursed. Uh, it's just it's 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 an ancient ancient scroll that anyone any six individuals who who come into contact with it will be <laughs> will be cursed. Everyone will turn against them. All houses will 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 shatter themselves. Everyone will try to kill the bearers of the scrolls. What if only five people had taken the scroll? Would the curse still have worked? I don't know. <laughs> Damn it. <laughs> we had to we had to meet the requirements to enter the the guild hall. It had to be six. It had to be six. Can you please heal this? It hurts very, very badly. 
first? Is there a way to remove this curse? I, 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 I don't know. Perhaps that's, that's beyond my reckoning. Well, I'm sure that hurts, but you know what else hurts? It's being thrown under the bus like this. What's a bus? <laughs> it's an old saying. Something, something you don't want to be thrown under. <laughs> fair enough, fair enough. Can you, ah, oh, please, this hurts very badly, and it, it's like right above an itch, and <laughs> if somebody could both scratch the itch and pull the itch out, I would be quite grateful. I step on his shoulder and pull it out. Oh, fuck. Oh, thank you. Thank you. No, no. I'm, I'm sorry that it turned out this way, but like I said, this is this is how it has to be. I, I need to get back to my plane. Hang on a minute. Can you send us to another plane that maybe isn't made of, like, fire or something crazy like that, but where we might still be able to get by? Give me a persuasion check. Uh, 20. Uh, uh uh, I su- suppose I could. Um, would you... Would you like to do that now? Yeah. I'm not doing anything. I yeah, w- might as well. All right, and he stands up almost as if the wound doesn't hurt him anymore. I will require 100 gold pieces once oh, more. Oh, you do- hey, dog. <laughs> there is a There is a cost. And I need 100 gold pieces. Well, uh... I guess. Okay. I'll give him my share. Okay, you give him a hundred gold. Yeah. Okay. So wait, can... it's a hundred a piece. Yeah. No, I'm giving just a hundred. My no. share of the hundred. Yeah. It's oh, like okay. 20. Not, you each. You each got a hundred. Yeah. Okay. So. Mm, I'm not paying. I'm for not doing that there. <laughs> <laughs> so you guys all donate the gold. Yeah. Sure. Okay. Oh, do we leave? No. No. We go back to the swamp. Mm, fuck you, face. <laughs> <laughs> Do you guys just like... Tree leave? man. <laughs> yep. Okay, so you guys scuttle off into the swamp. Oh. Easy math. Wow. I give him 25 gold. <laughs> <laughs> uh, uh, okay, well, the rest of you... Um, and he holds the gold in his hand, and you watch it as it ignites, and he traces a shape in the air, and sh- <laughs> the world turns around you, you feel yourself tumbling through spectral light, and you land on a cobblestone path in the middle of an empty village. And that's where we're going to end. All right. All right. Who the fuck Ooh. was that guy? <laughs> 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 little uh, shenanigans. Little shenanigans, yeah. So, uh, yeah, this is normally where I'd give you guys XP, but it's a one shot, so. Uh, y'all went to level six. <laughs> nice. So if uh, if next year you guys want to play this again, <laughs> um, uh, yeah. But uh, yeah, yeah, I mean, yeah. If you want to those characters, or if you're planning on using those characters again, some somewhere somehow, level six for them. Okay. Um, yeah. Uh, should we do just a an MVPC just for the fuck of it? Do you guys want to do that? Sure. Uh, so what we do is we vote on who the most valuable player character was for yeah. that session. Um, and what we do is we hold up a finger and we'll do Tomas being one, Lindsay being two, Michaela being three, Elijah being four, <laughs> Stephanie being five, and Scott, if you would like to vote for Scott, hold up a whole hand and a thumb. <laughs> He'll be six. And we'll vote. And it's for who both characters, basically? Yes. Basically, you're voting for the person this time um, to see just... Just as kind of an, an additional accolade on who deserves, just like who did the best. You don't get anything, but except <laughs> our esteem. Yeah, <laughs> Normally, you'd get experience in our. <laughs> you get five hundred experience. Bragging but, rights. Yes, yeah. bragging rights for this one shot. So, think for a moment who you'd like to vote for, and then on the count of three, everyone hold up. You're not allowed to vote for yourself. <laughs> hold up the yeah. amount of fingers for the person you're voting for. One, two, three, four, five. Oh. Six. Sorry. Sorry, I was just showing you who each person was. <laughs> I was like, man, he's counting fast. <laughs> <laughs> All right, on the count of three. One, two, three. All right, so we've got, nice. or is that a five? Six, six, and six. Wow. All right, so. Oh, damn, I'm blushing. Okay, so uh, who didn't vote for Scott? That's I did. <laughs> okay. <laughs> His support All right. system. <laughs> All right, so Steph, who'd you vote for and why? I voted for Michaela. Um, because her character 
um, died. Well, he, no, he, he stopped and he talked to the statues. He, we wouldn't have known where to go and get oh, the true. scroll if he hadn't true. done that. And then um, um, Mixie, first of all, is adorable. And second of all, was pretty badass with a frying pan. Yeah. So. Thanks. Scott, who'd you vote for and why? I voted for Flim. Okay. And oh. so when I thought back on it, um, Silger was like, always doing stuff but it was really haphazard Mm -hmm. and it wasn't thought out and it was like pure luck that he got through it but all the stuff that Flynn did casting detect magic casting detect traps all that stuff like it was more thought out and had more utility and served a direct purpose Mm -hmm. absolutely yes Um, I agree that was that was really good you guys were like yin and yang over there (laughs) Uh, Tomas why did you vote for Scott Uh, you had good initiative you were leading which is kind of funny that you're a fighter um (laughs) And, yeah, you were just succeeding at everything. And you didn't die. So, yeah. <laughs> Lindsay, why'd you vote for Scott? Um, I mean, pretty much same thing. Um, pretty good at roguing and also being a fighter. <laughs> so, <laughs> so it worked out. Yeah. yeah, I forgot that you were not supposed to be good at being a rogue. <laughs> <Right. laughs> but, yeah, you took a lot of initiative and you just kind of drove the the plot along so good job uh i thought the voice was adorable (laughs) Um, loved that his thieves tools were basically just a pole arm (laughs) (laughs) uh and he did a lot he did a whole lot so yeah very useful well that means tonight's mvpc is scott (laughs) <laughs> Take uh, 500 experience and make yourself a better person in real life, I okay. guess. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, so yeah, that's, uh, that's I think, it for our first uh, combined podcast one shot uh, here with the Shocking Gas podcast. Um, is there any things you guys would like to say before we close out for the day? No, it was great meeting you guys. I've yeah. been listening to your show for a long time, so it's awesome to get to see you on person. Thank you very much for having us here. Yeah, thanks yeah. for inviting us. Yeah. Thank you, guys. Yeah, yeah. You thanks for great job. <laughs> yeah, uh, yes, we would, uh, obviously, we, we liked having you guys. You guys are great. So thank you for playing with us. And make sure you guys check out the Shocking Gas podcast. And what are those details again, Scott? The website is shockinggasp.com. On Twitter, which is where we're the most prevalent, is at shockinggaspdnd. And we should be able to be found on any podcasting platform. That's right. Listen, and like I said, become obsessed. Fall in love. Maybe wait outside their house when you know for them to get off work. Um, they live in Florida, so uh, <laughs> wink. Uh, <laughs> so good luck climbing through those Everglades. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, uh, thanks for listening uh, to us, guys. Uh, once again, Chad Piper with the intro song, Adrian von Ziegler with that beautiful background music. Check out our Patreon, donate, become a, uh, make us a warlock. That we love that shit. Thanks for listening. If you're well, Gen Con will be passed, but maybe we ran into some of you guys at. Gen Con, like uh, Steve and Hank. You guys are really cool. Thanks for coming and saying hey. Thanks for uh, buying me a beer, Hank. That yeah, was great. Hank, that was, you maybe back off a little bit. Life long. <laughs> <laughs> but, uh, um, yes, but most importantly, thank you for listening to the D20 Syndicate Podcast. I am your host and DM Seth, and we go on adventures so you don't have to. Goodbye. Bye. Bye. <laughs>
<laughs> Edit that out. <laughs> Are you happy now? I don't know. I, I don't, don't know. think I can get closer. Safely. Like I feel like is it might, just put it, it just in be... your mouth? <laughs> <laughs> is it the is it What's the up, lower guys? level of the mic that everyone? Uh, Welcome. Um, um, fuck you. <laughs> I did not this record that. We, we actually get along. <laughs> so, no, this, we, have, we have a very adversarial way of communicating with each other. But this all feels very familiar. <laughs> good, <laughs> good. Yeah. yeah, he has like knifed me like before. The scariest one, it's in group chat. Like, <laughs> yeah. Because neither of us use, like, LOL yeah, or anything. Sure <laughs> every day you guys are going to stop being friends. <laughs> <laughs> this is it. We get in, we get in heated debates that everyone else assumes is at a friendship ending <laughs> argument. Yeah. <laughs> but it's now not. that's just Tuesday. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> like we've been friends for what, 16 years now? So Too long. Yeah. <laughs> okay. You can start whenever you want. Fuck you. Um, <laughs> okay. Are you guys going to do a good woo then when I fucking announce no, the thing? No, or are you guys too early? Absolutely not. <laughs> Just, nah, fuck you, dude. No. <laughs> you can suck my dick. <laughs> All right. Cell phone sounds off. Ah, mm-hmm. see, my paper doesn't vibrate. <laughs> <laughs> he got us good, guys. Yeah. Lock the doors. Get out. <laughs>